protection. Make us quick to every proper turn. On a weekend set aside to remember heroes seeking not their own good, but the good of many, may the monstrous energy of these cars, drivers, teams, and fans represent the proper respect of a grateful and indivisible nation. I pray in the name of the one who drives out fear, amen. here to perform our national anthem. Please welcome United States Marine Corps Captain Sky Martin. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Let's hear it. 
A weekend of racing and remembrance. The Coca-Cola 600 live from Charlotte Motor Speedway straight ahead. Hundred miles in Charlotte. And as you look live here at the end of the night in Charlotte, NASCAR will crown a Coca-Cola 600 champion. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. And this is a grueling test of speed and endurance with Michael Waltrip, Chris Myers, as we are back here on the grid. And the first 11 starters in this race, Michael, have never won the Coca-Cola 600. Yeah, and the Toyotas, I think, might be the story tonight, Chris. They've got a lot of speed. They really closed the gap on Kevin Harvick since last week's race. I look for them to be strong. And an experienced driver that I think can handle the transition from daylight to dark is Martin Truex Jr. Really fast yes, uh, yesterday's practice. Yeah, so 600 miles 
will go speeds of near 200 miles per hour, including the 18 car of that Toyota, Kyle Busch, who's won three races this year, uh, but has yet to win a points cup race here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And now for the most famous words in motorsports. Please welcome Virginia Johnson, Senior Vice President of Government Relations and External Affairs for the USO, and Robert Irvine, celebrity chef, veteran of the Royal Navy, and founder of the Robert Irvine Foundation. This Memorial Day, the USO and Coca-Cola are proud to salute America's military service members and their families, especially those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. To give the command, here with me today is Robert Irvine, a tireless supporter and tour veteran of the USO. He recently returned from his 12th USO tour and joins me today to honor the sacrifices our service members and their families make every day for our nation. So please join him in saying the most famous four words in motorsports. Drivers, start your engines. Today we enjoyed breakfast in Monaco, lunch in Indianapolis, but now begins the feast and the dinner guest list is impressive. The defending 600 champ with an appetite for big wins. At the head of the table, our pole sitter hoping to savor his first Charlotte win while his young teammate dominated practice. Four time winner would be happy to pick up the check. Jimmy Johnson to win for the first time this season. Kevin Harvick, well, as we'll tell you later, he has a seat back by the kitchen, but look for him to make his way forward. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Joy. Good evening and welcome to Charlotte. Tomorrow, our most solemn of holidays, the Memorial Day tradition that began in 1868 to honor our Civil War dead continues today. But first, there is a race to be run on this Sunday, and it's the longest one in NASCAR, 600 grueling miles broken up in stages of 100 laps each. It'll be a game of strategy, of endurance, and battling the heat and humidity. Who can prevail on this one and a half mile speedway at the hub of NASCAR, Charlotte, North Carolina? It's the Coca-Cola 600. It's live on Fox.
we continue the world's biggest day in auto racing, NASCAR's longest race. Time for the Coca-Cola 600. Endurance, mental toughness, strategy, skill. You are exhausted when that race is over with. A lot of great history with this race. I think this place is very, very special. 600 miles didn't get much better than this, folks. It's the Coca-Cola 600 on Fox. We are proud to broadcast the first 16 point paying events plus two all-star tilts in each NASCAR season, but there is nothing like this. 600 miles, 400 laps, four stages. More than 5,000 active members of our U.S. military on hand to be part of the pre-race ceremony and to enjoy this great race. Kyle Busch will lead them to the green flag runner up last year. He's never won the 500. And Joey Logano for Team Penske, trying to continue their string and sharing the front row with his Ford. There on the left side of your screen is the starting lineup for tonight's race. Let's jo uh, dial up Joey Logano and see what he has to say. Joey Logano, I know we just talked to you a little bit ago, buddy, but we wanted to talk to you just before this race starts. We talked about your birthday. We talked about you being a dad. But now you got to get up on the wheel and be a race car driver. What's your biggest challenges tonight, buddy? Uh, I think the biggest challenge is probably going to be keeping up with this racetrack. Going to uh, keep cooling off. It's already started cooling off. And as that uh, TJ1 wears off the racetrack, that track cools off. We just got to make sure we keep up with the all the transitions and up with our adjustments during the pit stop. So long night. Anything can happen. We'll uh, keep our heads in the game here and make sure we get a solid finish and be spraying some Coca-Cola and victory lane at the end of this thing. Well, buddy, it's been a big day for your car owner winning Indy and uh, Brad Kazowski winning yesterday. Any extra pressure on you tonight? Don't screw it up now, right? He's got the perfect week going on with the Hall of Fame and uh, Xfinity wins and Indy 500. Uh, it'd be really cool to add a Coke 600 to that as well. All right, my friend. Good luck and, uh, and Godspeed. All right. Thanks, guys. Have fun up there. Our Fox Sports Remembers scroll will continue to run across the bottom of the screen during our pit reports. That is a list of fallen servicemen and women during the last year, a list that we hope with each passing year grows ever shorter. We've got a four pack of pit reporters for you down on the ground, boots on the ground, starting with Jamie Little. Well, Mike, Kyle Busch grew up dreaming of racing in NASCAR, dreaming of calling Charlotte home and winning right here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Well, he's won here 17 times to be exact between Xfinity, trucks, and an all-star win, but he's never won a points-paying cup race. If Kyle Busch wins tonight, he will become the first driver in NASCAR history to win at every track he's competed at. He was the fastest in qualifying, and he'll lead this field to green. Regan Smith? Jamie, Eric Jones is, com is competing in a very unique double this weekend. Yesterday, he was a member of our Fox Sports crew calling the Xfinity race. Tonight, 600 miles on the racetrack behind me. He was the fastest in happy hour yesterday and loves his race car. The only cause for concern was some excessive heat on his floorboard of his race car. With temperatures on that floorboard expected to reach 140 degrees plus tonight, they added just a little bit of cooling for him to get through this entire race. If he gets through this whole race, he stands a very good shot at becoming the eighth driver to get their first career win in the Coca-Cola 600. Matt? When you drive for owner Roger Penske, you know there's no month more important than May. A few hours ago, Penske scored his 17th Indy 500. Brad Keselowski and the Deuce is chasing his first ever crown jewel event win and the captain's second here in the 600. Now, Brad told me confidence is high, plenty of speed in the car. His concern, though, is how quickly that traction compound will fade. And at night's end, where the dominant lane will be. Vince Walsh. When Jeff Gordon retired three years ago, young phenom Chase Elliott took over his seat. NASCAR has no bigger star in the waiting than the 22 year old Elliott. His family is racing royalty, but in his third full season at the cup level, Hendrick Motorsports is struggling and Elliott is still seeking his first career win. Gordon got his first win here in the 600. Boy, it'd be good medicine for Hendrick Motorsports and perfect timing if Elliott could get his first here tonight. Larry? 
Yeah, Vince, Mike Joyce said it. A long race, four stages. Think about it like four quarters with each stage, each quarter being 100 laps. Ironically, about the time each one of these stages ends, this track is going to be going through a major change. Joey Logano said it, keeping up with the racetrack. Those adjustments at the end of each stage, they are going to be critical. It may be the key to get in the victory lane. Let's take a look now at our race analysis. 400 laps, 600 miles each stage, 100 laps. Pit road speed, very important, 45 miles per hour. The fuel window, 58 to 62 laps. The grip level on a one to five, five being the most, a four, it will only get better. And then to the rear will be Landon Castle in the double zero and Bubba Wallace Mike in the number 43. Thanks, Larry. They'll be back there along with J.J. Yaley in the seven and Kevin Harvick in the number four both of whose cars failed pre-qualifying inspection, so they did not get to turn a lap in qualifying. I said we need to keep a close eye on that four car. He's going to be fun to watch. You're riding with rail cam down the back straightaway inside the backstretch wall at up to 100 miles an hour to give you this unique view. We've been dodging thunderstorms in the Queen City for the last 10 days. Bit of cloud cover tonight, but no rain expected. 82 degrees, track temp 110 as we get ready to race. There's the 2018 Toyota Camry XSE that leads the field. Lights are out on its roof, so it will make the sharp left turn to pit road. And we'll be off in this long day's journey in tonight. 400 laps. 600 miles. Great crowd on hand in the grandstand and the infield. Pace car is in. Mike, tonight we thank all who have sacrificed so we can enjoy our freedom. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing, boys. lap at Charlotte like the last lap at Indy team Penske out in front Joey Logano. Well I was really interested to see that Kyle Busch chose that outer lane and Joey Logano was able to take advantage of the lower lane right now. I think it takes a few laps for that traction compound to get some heat build some rubber up to get the grip and that's you know what NASCAR and this uh, track here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. It's a, a compound that they've sprayed on this track to try to make that middle to higher groove stickier for those Goodyear tires to stick to. I think that may be something Kyle Busch thought worked really good yesterday. He was in the race yesterday, but it didn't work out so good tonight. At fifth place, it's Ryan Newman outside of Brad Keselowski. Keselowski without his longtime spotter Joey Meyer tonight. Meyer's son graduated U.S. Navy basic training this weekend. Dad was there for the ceremony. So they have a substitute up on the roof. Jefferson Hodges from Rev Racing calling the race for Keselowski. And big shoes to fill because Joey Meyer is one of the best. And Brad Keselowski can give a lot of credit to some of his wins to Joey Meyer. Denny Hamlin in the 11 on the outside of Ryan Newman. Newman fights right back. Fourth place. I think what I think what happened to Kyle Busch. I think that traction compound maybe it wasn't what he thought it was going to be on that first lap Mike. He lost a little ground to the 22 but he is making it up in a hurry and now he's challenging for the lead. When I think Joey Logano his strategy right now I'll give you that bottom because this traction compound my car up here in this middle lane is starting to come Three in back on the line. Two back. Back, back. Come and see you now. now Kyle might get there, but is he going to be able to complete this pass? Of course, this is 600 miles, so Joey might give it to him. He just put up a mild fight right now. You don't want to go to, you don't want to go against the ropes yet. Power move by Kyle Busch to get it back. And that's allowed Eric Jones to close on the leaders. 
Eric was extremely fast in practice. Here's somebody else that was really fast in practice. That's Kyle Larson, the 42 car. Whoa, really loose in the middle, three and four. Eric Almirola to the inside of Larson. Yeah, Larson's going to play with that high line tonight, Mike. I'm afraid that may be his Achilles heel, though. I'm not sure that's going to work all night. And along comes Jones, second place. Eric on the inside in the 20 of Joey Logano. Well, he, I, he topped all our practice categories yesterday. He sure did. He was super fast, short run, middle of the run, long run. And I tell you who struggled on the longer runs was who Eric Jones is going in under, underneath right now. Joey Logano, he really is going to have to tune that car for the longer runs tonight. And right now is when that crew chief's got to be on the radio telling Joey, Joey Logano, calm down. We got a long way to go. We'll get you fixed up. Clear, clear, clear. Half back still. And one back now, pulling away. Still 10 back to the 11 behind him. Kevin Harvick has climbed 13 positions to 24th. I really thought that we just saw him go by his teammate Clint Boyer. Here's a battle for second place. The 20 of Eric Jones going to the inside of the 22 of Logano. Seems to be able to get to the bottom and inside of the 22 through three and four. Not able to complete that pass down here in one and two, though. Always found three and four to be better on the bottom. One and two a little better up around the top. And I think that's what Joy Logano is doing. Keeping an eye on Chase Elliott, who's dropped back to 28, six spots behind where he started, Vince. Yeah, off to a tough start. He said the brake, he pushed the brake pedal and it went all the way to the floor. That's why he ended up losing the spots. He says it's back to about 75%, but they definitely feel like they've got an issue. He said he feels there's a slight vibration as well. He doesn't know if they're related, but the brake issue certainly caught his attention at the start. That's uh, Moldy Charlotte winner Casey Kane in the 95 this year. Going around Elliott. You, know, you don't think about a mile and a half track where they're carrying this much speed as needing a lot of brakes like we talk about with Martinsville and some of the shorter tracks. But those brakes are extremely important in setting the right pace into the corner. So we see there goes the 20 of Eric Jones by Logano. Yeah, he put a slight chop on him. Went yeah, in low drift right up in front of the 22 of Logano and was able to make the pass. That 20 car is bad fast yeah, right and now. His teammate. Hamlin's coming also. Yeah, we're on the way to having three Joe Gibbs Toyotas in the top three spots. Grab an ice cold Coke and buckle up. You're watching the Coca Cola 600 on Fox.
16 laps complete, and Joe Gibbs has three of his four drivers in the top three spots ahead of Joey Logano's Ford, Ryan Newman's Chevrolet, and Penske teammates Blaney and Keslowski. I got. I've been keeping an eye on that 31 car too, Mike. He's up to fifth place there. Uh, Ryan, Ryan Newman in the 31 car, and that car looks really good right now. Yeah, we, we've been used to seeing Kyle Larson be the lead Chevrolet team at a lot of races this week or this year, but Newman right now is leading that charge for Chevrolet. We saw Andy Petrie down there on pit road, and Andy's over there helping those guys at RCR right now, and I think he might be making a difference. Yeah, and I think right now also Logano's really struggling with the handling on his car. Newman's teammate, Austin Dillon, won this race last year leading just the final two laps and, and Mike and Jeff made a good point. I don't know that having a car that's off a little bit right now is a big deal because we're going to go so through so many transitions traction compound daylight to dark. So I'm not I wouldn't be real concerned just yet if I were the 22 car. Jamie how about Joey Logano. Yeah the handling has gone away from what he expected at the start of this race basically just saying he really needs some rear grip especially through the center he's not able to hold it there long enough so you know it was something to keep in mind a lot of times we see if cars aren't handling well in the beginning they're usually pretty good at the end it's all about keeping up with the track and that's what the plan is for the 22. Logano had a birthday this week. Turn 28, Larry. And guys, if he's lacking rear grip now, which means that the back end is loose, the anticipation as this track cools down, it's only going to lose more rear grip. The cars will get freer, a little looser as we go into the night. Yeah, Larry, all we've been hearing uh, from the drivers is I'm tight, I'm tight, I'm tight. And so I have a feeling that maybe Todd Gordon and Joey Logano may have just gone a little bit too far, got over the edge, and made that car a little too loose right now. And Paul Wolf, Brad Keselowski's crew chief, Brad won the Xfinity Series race yesterday. He said even at the end of that race that that traction compound was starting to go away a little bit. And that group catching up to Logano is Kyle Larson in seventh place, Matt. Definitely on the move, and Kyle Larson was telling Chad Johnson that the car had a wheel hop weird type situation, and it's on the free side. Chad reported back they did make an air pressure change since practice, and he didn't really have any wheel hop issues then, but he does now. Making headway, though, things are good. You know, I think back to Phoenix, I believe it was, and we saw that 42 car with that rear right rear wheel start hopping up and down, and he spun out. And so uh, maybe they got the air pressure just a little too low in the right rear tire. And this track has a lot of bumps getting into turn three that'll make those rear tires really chatter as they come over those bumps. And, and, and Jeff, that's uh, Joey Logano was telling me earlier today that this track is brutal. He said, I don't know what they've done to it, but it is the roughest I can ever remember being in. The, we end the car cameras that you see the drivers are taking a beating in these cars. Riding with Martin Truex as he catches up to Ryan Blaney and that group that includes Larson and Logano. Jamie McMurray's from the show me state and he's going show me how close I can run to that wall. Well I know one thing that wall is saying you might want to move down just a little bit because you're getting mighty close to me. <laughs> well I saw a lot of cars using the middle groove and not taking this uh, advantage of this traction compound that goes all the way up to that next group. But Jamie McMurray is certainly doing it, making it work. It, you can get a big run and get a lot of momentum off the corner if you can run that lane. I, I'm convinced that's Kyle Larson's car. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be. Oh, well, maybe it once it, was. It, They're teammates. It, no, they are. And that thing wants to run the wall. And that's the way Larson always has been. <laughs> Let's go back to 10th place, Brad Keslowski third of the team Penske cars we listened in yeah, we're, we're really bad here um, it lands and the front end does nothing and then I get on the throttle I'm pretty loose I'll lower the track for it at least get the exit but I mean it's so bad at load up I'm getting clobbered there I can't get into the corner at all that's Joey Logano Parker Kligerman has slammed the wall in turn four he continues he's on the back stretch now and may have to pit after this happens. Yeah, he gets up again the wall right here and you can just see him. He rides at pretty good ways. I don't know that he made real hard contact, but I got to believe some sheet metal might be against his tires. No caution and Kligerman stays on track as Martin Truex takes seventh from the 22 of Logano. <laughs> Thank you.
Joe Gibbs Toyota's one two three the coach has won at Charlotte three times going for four. out here uh, and have NASCAR support us uh, and all the fans are honoring us and we can both support them. Uh, we love uh, being out here for Memorial Day and having the fans come out and talk to us. Hey everybody, I hope you're having a good day right now. You know, I'm with the U.S. Army and at the end of the day, we just want everybody to be safe. Just some of the more than 5,000 servicemen and women here to help celebrate Memorial Day weekend at the Coca-Cola 600. 32 laps complete. Kyle Busch has led 28 of them in his number 18, starting from the pole. Let's go back to 13th position. Kevin Harvick started 37th, marching his way through the field. Jamie. Up 24 positions already. I talked to his crew chief, Rodney Childers, earlier. How do you set up this race car for being in the back in that dirty air, that turbulent air with traffic? He said the key is to keep it turning well. The cars don't like to handle with other cars around it, so they kept that in mind. Keep that car stable and turning well. Something else he told me, though, we need to be in a hurry. We need to get in the top 10 by the end of the stage because we don't want to give up any of those stage points tonight. He's on his way, well on his way. Boy, Joey Logano in that 22 is dropping like a rock. Ricky Stenhouse to his inside to take over the final top 10 spot and there is Harvick right with him and look at Harvick just painting that white line look how good you talk you heard them t talk about how good his car's turning when you can get down to the white line and just roll right on it stay on it and gain on the car ahead of you you know your car is turning and working good yeah Harvick has the most stage wins he's got six already last year's 600 winner Austin Dillon fought the wall guess who won Tire went 
down. And we're under caution. Nice we'll bring it back to him here. Nice to move. For the first time today, lap 37. Hell of a save right there. Mike, a lot of damage that right rear, and I did see one of the crush panels, which is separates the tire and everything from the inside of the car. That thing come flying out. He's going to have a lot of fumes in that car when they get this fixed. Now he was running 16. You hear that tire flailing around. You could tell he he knew something was going on, uh, going wrong right there. And great job to Austin Dillon. Recognizing that tire was about to go down and slowing the car down and being ready to turn back to the right as that car slid the back into the wall. Now, most teams were planning on splitting this stage 50 laps each on a fuel run and for tires, but everybody will be coming. The pace is slowed down over two seconds. But what I might would do if I was at the back of the field, when you get the one to go, I would come top off of fuel. You're right there on the threshold of being able to make it to the end of the stage. Don't pit if you're up front. Don't give up track position. But if you're at the back, come top it off when we get the one to go. A lot of damage, especially to the right rear sheet metal. Oh, Mike, you can see there, yeah, you can see the where the crush panel is gone. That's just wide open to the tire fumes and everything else coming right up in the car. Yeah, and I mean, we talk about how important aerodynamics are. Those aerodynamics tie into that crush panel being sealed to that uh, right side quarter panel also. Of course, a little bit of maybe <laughs> might not be a bad thing, but boy, that, there's going to be a lot of fumes coming in there, Daryl. That's a little too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pit road will be open this time. A break for drivers like Joey Logano that were free falling through the field. And the Gibbs cars are in first. Regan. Well, Eric Jones hits the very first pit box as he comes off of turn four. His race car's been good. It's been harsh over the bumps, which makes it just a little free. A small air pressure adjustment and tape on the nose. Vince. 31 of Ryan Newman pits from the fourth position. They're going to put the wrench in the right rear, give him an adjustment there to help with the aggressiveness of his entry. Four tires for the 31, Matt. Kyle Larson in the 42 started out free, and that's when he felt that wheel hop sensation. But as the car started to go to the tight side, that's when it went away. Wedge adjustment on the 42. Jamie? Kyle Busch in the number one pit box, getting looser and tighter on exit. A four-tire stop. He won an ice and a drink, and it looks like he wins the race off pit road. Now, Eric Jones came in in the top three. It looks like he's going to come out 17th. Here's why. That's Casey Kane pitted just in front of him. Couldn't get out. And he looked really close to the inside wall there also. Yeah, close to the front edge too.
Checking out the Coca-Cola race day experience. Share a Coke is back with more names than ever. Coca-Cola invites you to share an ice cold Coke this summer with someone who needs it most. Working the first caution flag, and after that round of stops, here are your Xfinity fastest pit stops on the lower right of the screen. That list includes Jimmy Johnson. Drivers with the new digital dash have a switch where they can cycle through several pages of what to look at under race and pit road conditions. Jimmy? Sorry about my pit in. I changed my page on myself somehow and wasn't sure how fast I was going. I was panicking a bit. Yeah, Are you on the page you need to be? Yeah, I got it. That's why I was out wide and slow. I, I got it figured out. I went to shut off the brake fan and uh, somehow changed the page too. All right, I'll grab the low-hanging fruit. <laughs> Does this mean Jimmy and Chad are on the same page? Nah, oh, no. Did you go there, Mike? Um, what he's talking about there with the fans, what, what you want to do is turn those fans up. Those are blowers that are blowing air through the ducts. And what happens when the pit crew members come in there to change those tires, if you don't shut those brake blowers off, it just blows the brake dust right in their face and in their eyes. So that was why he was reaching for those fans on the dash and unfortunately hit the switch for the dash. Larry? Yeah, let's take a look at our Ford Performance car. And we don't actually have the pit road page on our dash, but I can kind of show you what they were talking about. If you look right here, there's the digital dash. You can see they're, they're all analog right now. There's the page switch. And the driver can change that like we can change ours from, from analog to digital right there on water and oil temperature. But they also have the ability to switch that page switch right there and go to a pit road page. So a lot of options with the digital dash. Thanks, Larry. They're going to go back and give one to go. They have refigured the lineup. Ryan Newman came to pit road fourth, and his team was over the wall too soon. J.J. Yaley speeding on pit road, so they'll both be in the back on the restart as Austin Dillon makes another stop for repairs to the right rear of his car that brought out this caution at lap 37. Denny Hamlin will restart second. That first run mile, this is not as good as we hoped for. Good news is it means it's full. Uh, right now we're still quite even, so obviously save a little bit at the end if we need to. Obviously backing up entry of car length, use must brakes all we're going to need. And Mike, I was thinking definitely with these additional cautions that they can go to the end of stage one now. And you notice the 18 chose the outside for this restart. Denny Hamlin racing to remember Staff Sergeant Jonathan Dozier of the U.S. Army, who died at age 30 in Iraq, leaving a wife and infant daughter. Dozier from Chesapeake, Virginia. All of the race cars, pace car, safety vehicles, racing to remember on this Memorial Day weekend. Kyle Busch, green flag. Truex Jr. going three wide to the top, going to make up some ground. Look at the momentum he carries off that top. That is bad pass off that top groove up there off turn two. Gives you some straightaway speed. Whoa. <laughs> See Larson <laughs> carrying all that speed off of turn four. Goes to the outside of Blaney. I'm not sure if he didn't give Blaney a little nerve fair just before he went by him on the outside. Car wiggled a little bit. Blaney's car did. Larson puts his Chevrolet to third behind two Toyotas and in front of Blaney's Ford. Kevin Harvick on his Serious radio show during the week predicted it would take him 55 laps to get to the top five. Sorry, it was Kyle Busch who predicted it would take Harvick 55 laps to get to the top five. We're at lap 45. I'd say we all agree with that. I don't think anybody would argue with that. I knew he'd come through the field pretty quick. It's got a great race car. That team is on fire. They've been great all year. Right in front of him, Martin Truex, who dominated these mile and a half tracks a year ago, Jamie. 
Well, he started this race 15th, has worked his way up to fifth. He said he can't roll the center fast enough, and he said it's really slick out there in these early goings. Actually used the word slimy to describe it. They made an air pressure adjustment and put four fresh tires on the 78. Eric Jones, after having to back up to leave his pit due to poor parallel parking, now in ninth place, just ahead of Jimmy Johnson, chasing Eric Almirola. Matt? Mike, it's been impressive since the switch to Ford for Stuart Haas Racing a year ago, how the entire organization has stepped up to performance. All four cars, stout, week in, week out. Eric Almirola, early on he was in the car, was too free into turn three, but it was definitely manageable. He gained a spot under those pit stops, no changes, just riding right now. Now here's Joey Logano trying to rebound. He had fallen quite a bit in that opening green flag run from his front row starting spot. He's now trying to charge back. He's at 13th with Alex Bowman right behind. Then Jamie McMurray and Kurt Busch. I'm sure they took a little swing at the car. It was loose and the one to tighten him up a little bit. I don't know how long it'll take before that car gets happy. I don't think they helped it all that much. So it's uh, doesn't seem to be going anywhere. And we've seen where any adjustment under a pit stop, unless it's an air pressure adjustment, you're going to lose time on that pit stop and lose position. Daniel Suarez at 20th. Runner up in the All Star race last Saturday night. And you're looking on pit road at Austin Dillon's car aflame. Yeah, they're going to have to cut their losses, Mike. They're going to have to repair that right rear, get that get that uh, inner panel back in there. And there's just no way you can race that, drive that car like that. Chris Buescher up the hill in the 37. Cracking Chase Elliott in 18th place. This happening eight seconds behind the leaders. But Mike, during the race, uh, you got to try. I mean, you got to try and see if you can fix it. Maybe it'll hang in there long enough to get something done. But. Uh, apparently that's not going to work out for and, them. And Daryl, and you've raced in this race enough times. I know I have. When you have a problem early like that, boy, you talk about a long 600 miles. Almirola trying to make a move on Ricky Stenhouse. Two Fords battling for seventh, four seconds back of the lead. Boy, that quick pit stop, that great pit work that Brian Patty and that team did really got Stenhouse uh, move him up in the field a little bit. But right now he's got Almirola running over all over the back of him. Eric Jones trying to work his way back to the front. And Mike, Eric, with Eric Jones, he's a young guy. He's, you know, limited experience. This is where the crew chief has to really, really calm him down. We lost some spots. We know why. Just get back in, get, get your game face back on and get back in the race. Jones was the guest analyst yesterday during our Xfinity race coverage on FS1. Very entertaining. He was. He was really good. And of course, he's a great little race car driver. I expected more out of this team and what I've seen so far this year. But there's a lot of potential right there. We're back at 24th. Remember, Ryan Newman had a pit road penalty for being over the wall too soon. That's his 31 battling rookie William Byron in the Hendrick 24. And just ahead, Matt Kenseth, who two weeks ago returned to the series to drive the Jack Roush number six. And we, we, we highlighted Stenhouse had a great pit stop. He's running up front in seventh. That just shows you the combination. Here's that battle going on. These three are going at it. But that just shows you the combination of crew chief driver spending time together, knowing how to adjust these cars to get the most out of it. It's going to take a little while for Matt Kenson to really get on that same page with his crew chief, Matt Pushin. Eric Jones said, will you two guys make up your mind? I'm in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> Regan. Well, Eric Jones has been very happy with his race car. Mike, the biggest problem, he just came on the radio and said, it's all track position right now. We saw him slide through the box and cause part of that problem by having a slow pit stop because of it. Otherwise, it's been quiet on his radio, and he likes his car. That was a beautiful move by Eric Jones, though. He saw Amarola squeeze and Stenhouse up high, and he just turned the corner in the middle and got a big run and cleared him by the time uh, they got to the start finish line. 
Kyle Busch has led 51 of 55 laps so far. We've had just one caution flag. Sixty-one laps complete. Kyle Busch leading. He is racing to remember specialist Eric Toad from Glasgow, Kentucky. Of the U.S. Army died in Iraq two weeks shy of his 22nd birthday. Survived by his wife, his parents, and a large extended family. Kyle Busch has led over a thousand laps at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Nobody else has led that much here without a points-paying victory. How about these notables seeking their first 600 mile win? They've all run up near the front in the early going here. And note Kevin Harvick in sixth, uh, failing to make good on Kyle Busch's prediction that at 55 laps, Harvick would be in the top five. Slacker <laughs> one spot away. Right. Remember he's the closer not the opener. That's right. Well what's been preventing him from getting into that top five is a guy that has dominated this racetrack over the last couple of years and that's right ahead of him Mark Truex Jr. And Jr. What I've noticed about Truex Jr. is he's been running that bottom groove and that's where the four car really likes to run. So I, I think you see Kevin Harvick run higher now that time in one and two he's going to have to change his line a bit. Truex in the last three 600s has led over 750 laps. There's only seven drivers in the race who've led that many laps in this race in their entire careers. And Mike, what I like of what I'm seeing out of that 78 car when he led those 392 laps here a couple of years ago, he never got off that white line. And he's eating that thing up tonight, just like he did a couple of years ago. And I think as this race goes on, the track temperature comes down. And that traction compound starts to wear like we heard some drivers talk about it did in the Xfinity race yesterday. 
Watch for that 78 car to be the one to beat. Defending series champ on under th at the White House this week by the president. And Harvick aiming for a top five spot gets it. He's only about 10 or 11 laps shy <laughs> of what they were Kyle Busch predicted. Behind this group Jimmy Johnson had a great pit stop. There's Jimmy in the 48 Vince. Yeah, he gained three spots during that pit exchange, and he's up 13 all told so far tonight, running 10th. The fallen service member being honored by the 48 is Army Ranger Frankie Phillips, who lost his life in Afghanistan in 2003. Members of Frankie's family are here tonight, including his mom, uh, Cherie, who you see there in the upper right-hand portion of the screen. You know, they presented Jimmy with dog tags uh, today, honoring Frankie. Jimmy wore those tags all day today, has them in his pocket as he races tonight. It was a real honor for Jimmy when I spoke with him about it earlier tonight before he got in the car. Well, there, there's a nice connection there, I believe, uh, that lady works in a Lowe's store up in Auburn, New York. Yes, sir. Yep. And, you know, we talked, heard the communication on the radio with Jimmy Johnson on that last pit stop. Boy, he, he may have had an issue with his page on the dash and different things, but it didn't slow that pit stop down. Yep. I like Johnson that. around Stenhouse tonight. Boy, I like the, way, uh, like the way Johnson is running the racetrack. Uh, he's kind of diamond in the corners a little bit, going up in the middle and getting a nice run off, and it's getting a, making some pretty nice speed around here right now. So Eric Jones has done a great job of climbing back up through the field after getting boxed in by Casey Kane there in his pit stall. He has climbed to eight, but is all well with the number 20. I think it could be uh, this track. I think the attraction compound. I think this track's going to go through a number of changes, right, Larry? I mean, different times the track's going to feel different to the drivers. This could be a change. 30 laps to go in stage one of the Coca Cola 600 on Fox.
24 laps to go in stage one. Kyle Busch has led all but four laps so far. There's your Fox Pfizer cam with Denny Hamlin in second place, three and a half back. Defending race winner Austin Dillon has taken his car to the garage area to make mechanical repair. And let's get an update on Hamlin. Regan. Well, Mike Denny, Denny Hamlin's crew chief, Mike Wheeler, told me before this race started he would not over adjust on this race car during the first hour and would instead wait till the track got closer to what it would be like tonight. Well, the thing about it, down here on Pitt Road, I got to tell you guys, it feels like we're halfway through this race right now. Temperature wise, this heavy cloud cover has cooled things off drastically, and the conditions are more like what these guys are going to fight at roughly the halfway point in the normal 600. Jeff, we know how you deal with heat, you hydrate, but how do you deal with this oppressive humidity? Yeah, I think to me the humidity is far worse than the heat. I think when the humidity is like this, it is, you're sweating so much more than you normally would. And you see that drink bottle for Denny Hamlin. He's not getting any fluids under these long green flag runs. He has to grab that bottle. Some drivers actually have a system in their car as we see a battle here for fifth place. Oh, sorry, I mean eighth place. Jimmy Johnson, the outside of Eric Jones, makes that pass. But some of these drivers actually have a system where they can push a, a button on the steering wheel and get fluids under green. And on a race like today, this long of a race, this hot of a race, especially this humid of a race, that can pay dividends. Yeah, Mike, it's like sitting in a sauna. Uh, the inside of these cars are just so hot, 104 degrees. It's humid outside, a lot of heat coming up off the floor. It's really like sitting in a sauna for four hours. Joey Logano, Paul Menard, Logano in 17th, Jamie. And he started this race on the front row and thought he'd have a pretty decent car, but it has been anything but. On that last stop, the only stop they've had so far tonight, they made a major wedge adjustment, three rounds to be exact, air pressure and four tires. It did not make a difference in the car. Joey's saying the car takes off okay, and then it just falls off, and now he says he's fighting everything. You know, Jamie, may, maybe on their next pit stop, they're going to have to either, they got spring rubbers they can put in or out of that left rear spring and help loosen or tighten that car. They may have to do something that drastic to get him back in the game. Larry, what do you do with a driver who's fighting everything? Well, I, I think like Jamie reported and a lot like DW said, obviously the car is numb. It's not reacting to subtle changes. I think they're going to have to get aggressive, maybe with spring rubbers in the rear spring, maybe in with, with shims in the front packers on the front shocks. Yeah, and Larry, I would add to that that as a crew chief, what Todd Gordon's going to have to do is, is calm Joey down, calm the situation, and just say, okay, Joey, what area of the track can I help you with the most and we can gain speed? Is it the entry, the exit, the middle? And just try to fix one of those things. You're never going to fix everything. Looking back from Kyle Larson, the highest Chevrolet in this race in third, Matt. Mike, during that first run, Kyle Larson said, over the rough parts, the bumps, the car would just get sideways. That's where the wheel hop situation would come in. But the car tightened up right before the pit stop. This run, the car has gone to the free side. Oh, and he's in the wall, Harvick. Kevin Harvick has slammed the wall in turn three. Jamie. Well, just uh, on the radio on the four, just said he thinks he blew a right front tire. Wow. Second caution of the day, lap 83, and it has pancaked the whole right side of Harvick's four. Here's a look. See him, he's trying to chase down the 42 of Larson. Now, he had been running a little bit lower than that. Well, yeah, you, you see, see the, the sparks. See the sparks started flying out from the cars. He went into turn three. Is it a left front or right front? Looks like a left front I, went I, down. I, I was going to say, I didn't, the right front looked fine, but that left front's flat. Yeah, as soon as it goes down, as soon as that tire goes down, the car sits on the splitter, and you lose your ride height, and that's what makes the car go up the racetrack into the wall. And I looked at that damage to the right front, Jeff. That's not just going to throw a tire on there and fix it. I think it got serious chassis damage. Pretty hard lick. Let's look at it back from Kyle Larson. Yeah, you can see that left side splitter just starts dragging the ground, Mike. I think that was a left front went down on him. Yeah, and if it when it's a right front, it just takes a abrupt turn to the right, where this one 
you can see it just gradually sets, the, the left front goes down, you see the sparks of the left front splitter just sitting on that splitter and goes up. I mean, it still hits the wall plenty hard enough. Yeah, that's a left front. Was definitely slower like a left front. Good job driving up through there, man. Yeah, it was uh, going to be fun. Harvick was racing to remember Lance Corporal Patrick Adel of the Marines, lost at age 21 in Baghdad. Say pit road's going to be busy, guys. Brigham? Well, Denny Hamlin heads down pit road looking for his pit box. He'll be with an opening in and an opening out. Race car was just a little bit tight in the first part of the corner and two free on exit. They're going to give him four tires and a small adjustment. Vince? 48 of Jimmy Johnson pits from the sixth position. They're just going to make a slight air pressure adjustment because this is going to be a short run to the end of the stage. Four tires, no other changes. Matt? When Kevin Harvick was filling Larson's mirror, he started to move around. Down low, the car was on the fleet side, but when he ventured up into the traction compound, it got tight. Jamie? Kyle Busch says his car is really good on the short run. It falls off just slightly, gets a bit tight. He wanted a Gatorade there. Four tires, no adjustments for the 18. Brad Keselowski wins the race off pit road fueled by Sunoco. No tires. <laughs> Plus 12 positions. What are you laughing at? The old contrarian. He's going to do something different. Well, there's a reason Brad Kozlowski <laughs> was fastest down pit road. He did not stop. <laughs> he was trying to get to his box. There he is, the white car. 
and was being counted into his box. Tried to turn in and missed it. Five forward, look left, look left, look left. My bad, sorry guys. I think it's worth wasting a set of tires here, Paul. We gotta try something to get our car better here, Paul. Yeah, I know while well, we got 12 laps left when we go green here. I'd rather have that set of tires. I'm not gonna get stage points here. Yeah, but we've only, uh, we've only pitted once now. We're at the end of the stage. We got plenty of tires. Kozlowski stays out. He's on worn tires. Kyle Busch and everybody else coming to the green flag. Brad Look at Larson, three Brad, wide uh, up sorry, the Jeff. middle. No, sorry, yeah. Darrell. Kazowski's going to wish he listed Paul oh, Wolf. Yes, he is. Uh, uh, he's he not going to get any Darryl. stage points. No, he's not going to. He may not even make it back. <laughs> he might go down a lap. <laughs> A lot of laps on those tires to stay out uh, when well, everybody else has got tires around you. And that did not do any good to Denny Hamlin, who restarted right behind him. If you ever want to know how important four fresh Goodyear tires are, that just showed you the problem with the one car. Uh oh. Yeah, I think McMurray has an issue. Yeah, he's slowing way down, Brad, because Ask almost ran over him. Mark Hadringham, get down. Maybe coming to you guys. Left side. Yeah, left rear. That left rear tire is down. That uh, could be. He's got a, it looks okay, but. Uh, no, I don't know. It could be just pressures. Rear. Pressures are low. I thought it was down. But. Said he had contact with David Reagan. Boy, all those tires look, yeah, they look pretty up. good. I mean, huh? from up here, anyway. <laughs> So McMurray gets four tires. Kyle Busch, Blaney, Johnson, Larson, Almirola. Stage points at stake here. Nine laps from now. Hey, Mike, Jeff, y'all remember when Jimmy Johnson owned this joint? He's looking like he wants to take it back over tonight. Yeah, pretty impressive run for him to move up into the top three or four. He's putting down fast lap, too. Fastest of the night so far for him. You can never count Jimmy Johnson, Jack Kanaus, and that 48 team out of anything. Vince? Well, remember, they started 23rd, and when I talked to Jimmy today before the race, he said, yeah, we qualified terrible. He said, but I'm not worried. I think we're actually pretty good, and I think you'll see that in the race. He was very calm and seemed very confident about his car, and they have been on the move, and they've had a couple of good pit stops, too. They picked up three spots on the first stop and did not lose anything, any ground at all on the second stop. So 48 on point in all areas tonight. Yeah, Vince, when he says he's pretty good at this racetrack at Charlotte Motor Speedway, I'd take that to the bank. <laughs> he definitely has a special knack of this racetrack. So far, having the best run he's had all year. Look at these greats tied with three wins apiece. Then look at Jimmy Johnson. And with four. Then, whoops, there's the man DW with five. Where did he come from? <laughs> I loved it. That's my favorite race, man. Johnson, a second and a half off the lead, was closing on Kyle Bush, but Kyle has now opened it up a bit, and Johnson may have to deal with Kyle Larson in the final six laps of stage one. We're right in here on board with Denny Hamlin. That, uh, you know, no pit. Call for the uh, two car of Keselowski really cost Denny Hamlin a lot of positions on that restart. <laughs> it cost it cost Keselowski a lot too. He's running 26 right now. Third place with five to go in stage one. Keselowski, by the way, is back in 26th, next to last car on the lead lap. He's not going to get lapped, but I'm going to tell you something. That shows not only what tires will do, but you don't argue with your crew chief. Not very often does that work out very well for you. Martin Truex is in the game. Yeah, the, in the 78. Of, tank car of Amarola had a little bit of a bobble off a of turn two, and Truex took advantage of it and got a huge run down the back straightaway. I shouldn't say argue. I should say disagree. Maybe that's a better word. Top 10 positions will pay 
points here at the end of stage one. Alex Bowman, the 88 in 10th, in position to get the final one. The stage winner gets a playoff point that carries all the way through to Homestead. You know, Mike, Kyle Busch has, he's got uh, three wins, and that's more, and he only has two stage wins. So this will be big for him tonight. You can hear the guys working that throttle. It's never all the way wide open. You've got to work it, work it, pedal a little bit, let the car get a little grip, and then get back in it. Things are going to get tight here whoa, down the whoa, straight whoa. away. That was J.J. Yaley. And that was Jimmy Johnson that went on the outside. Oh, my gosh. Well, that was close. All right, pits are closed for the final two laps in each stage. That did little to end that battle. Mike, you know what I see? I think Jimmy Johnson is feeling it tonight. Kyle Busch has led now 92 of the 90. Eight laps so far. Johnson and Truex fourth and fifth. Now, two years ago, this would have been for the, the lead. Those two went and battled it out here a couple years ago, and Truex went on to win. But right now, today, it's all about Kyle Busch in this 18 car. Here you go, Jimmy again. He just forced his way right in between the 78 and the 51. I think Truex might come out on top this time. He's going to get that bottom lane, come up in front of Jimmy and hold him off. Kyle Busch gets his third stage win of 2018 from Ryan Blaney, Kyle Larson, Martin Truex, Jimmy Johnson, and Eric Jones. Pips Alex Bowman to get the final point in stage one. Kyle Busch, your stage winner. Stage one complete in Charlotte. Kyle Busch, stage winner.
Toyota Ford Chevrolet first three spots Bush Blaney Larson. Matt DiBenedetto will get the free pass back on the lead lap he'll be 28. As for Brad Keselowski uh, not stopping for tires cost him about 13 positions but gained him a set of tires that they did not put on the car for that 12 lap run. We'll see how that plays out later tonight. Pit roads open Vince. Jimmy Johnson in the 48 pitting from fifth this time on that shorter run they'd made an air pressure adjustment and Jimmy didn't like how it tightened him up on landing. That's the only complaint much better on the longer run for Jimmy. It's going to be a four tire change Matt. Al Larson said the car was a little bit free to begin that short run but then once he got past Jimmy Johnson it balanced out OK. He did continue to adjust with the track bar adjuster. The car was good. Jamie. Ryan Blaney in the 12. The Penske driver says he's loose on both ends. A wedge adjustment, air pressure, and four tires. Your leader, leader so far the night, the 18. Kyle Busch said he's turning better there, just a little bit free. Four tire stop. Look at this land rush off pit road. Led by Kyle Busch and Ryan Blaney. Denny Hamlin picks up five spots. What do you say we dial up our stage one winner? Well, in no other sport do we get to do this during the game, so why not? Absolutely. Hey, Kyle Bush, this is Jeff up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me? Yes, sir. Got gotcha. you. Well, buddy, uh, you got the 100 mile mark and that stage one victory. What uh, kind of challenges you see ahead of you and staying on top of this track and ahead of the competition to get to 600 miles? Yeah, it's um, you know, a long race, so I think just the challenges of adapting to the track and kind of what's going to start happening here pretty soon. You know, we haven't had full sunshine today, so I don't anticipate big swings, but I do think it's still going to swing. And I've uh, got to keep this m and camera handling good and up front where she likes it. All right, well, thanks for talking to us, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Kyle Busch, the stage winner. Jimmy Johnson finishes in the top five in a stage for only the fourth time this year. The 18 out front.
Kyle Busch out front at the end of stage one after pit stops, 105 laps complete. Two cautions for contact. First for Austin Dillon, who cut a tire, and then this for Kevin Harvick in the four, working his way up through the field, cuts down a left front tire, gets into the wall and to the garage. Here's Regan. Well, not the place that Kevin Harvick wanted to be standing this early in the race. You had an absolute rocket ship up until that point. Did it give any warning that tire was going to go down? Yeah, I never gave any warning on our mobile one bush uh, forward. It just, um, I was going to try to run the, the middle to high lane right there, and, and just the tire went down and went up into the wall. So just really proud of my guys. We had a lot of issues this weekend. And loud over here. And to come back and have the fastest car there basically uh, at the beginning of that race is just an honor to drive and really proud of everybody on our team. So um, one of those deals, you got to take the good with the bad. And, and uh, this weekend was, was one of the bad ones uh, with another fast car. Sure, he'll be back up front in Pocono, guys. In 18 Coca-Cola 600s, this will be the first time that Kevin Harvick has failed to finish. Kyle Busch's Toyota opposite Ryan Blaney's Ford. The third generation speedster. New to Team Penske this year in the number 12. When the pace car hits pit road. They'll be headed for the Geico restart zone. And you know, stage two will be underway. You never have those kind of issues with your tires when you're running 25th or 30th. It's always when you got the best car and you have a shot at possibly winning. Back under green. See Mark Trix Jr. trying to give a push to the 18, be a good buddy <laughs> to Kyle Busch, and Jimmy Johnson took advantage of that and went in the middle three wide, but Truex comes back on that outside. But they what? That 48's got a little steam on the hood tonight. I know they got a new engine package they're trying over here this week. I believe it's working, Jeff. It looks good. Always good to come to the racetrack, especially the 600. A little extra power under the hood. Oh, yeah, I love it when they handle on the straightaway. That's my favorite. <laughs> and, Mike, we're talking about the 12 car of Blaney. Uh, those guys over there tell me that Blaney and Jeremy Bullens have really added a lot to their teams. It's helped uh, Keselowski and Logano the addition of the third car. Little bump and run here. Ricky Stenhouse in the 17 and Eric Jones in the 20. Just had a little fender to fender discussion. <laughs> That's a wad right there, man. That's a bunch of cars all going together and fighting hard. When you hear drivers that. talking a lot about track position being so important, nobody wants to give an inch, even in a 600 mile race. Especially right after a oh restart. Boy, Chase Elliott underneath his teammate, Alex Bowman. Bowman squeezed right through there in the 88. Wow. Whoa. Man, they're not done yet. Nope. I think Chase is going to make it, but yes, I don't know. They're coming back. Suarez on the outside in the green and white 19. Now rookie William Byron in the 24 to the top side. Well, Mike, right there, though, is when I give Chase Elliott a lot of credit. He uses a lot of intelligence, a lot of patience. He was in there, but he knew he didn't need to push it. Boy, Bowman just slid up right in front of Casey Kane down the back straightaway. Now the 19 Suarez is 12th. Matt. Mike, now Daryl and Jeff will tell you a big part of success is confidence. And over the past month, Daniel Suarez has certainly earned a lot more. Great run at Dover, nearly won the All-Star race a week ago. Right now, though, he's running the bottom, moving up. He's searching around. The front of the car has been numb most of the race. The air pressure change has helped a little bit from that last stop. He's trying to hold off quite a crowd here for 12th place. Micah, one thing that worries me when they say the front's numb and they make an air pressure change, we saw with Harvick that left front tire give a problem. You've got to really be careful and not let too much out, air out of that left front tire and abuse it and blow it out. Man, I can't believe how hard some of these drivers are running right now this early in this race. Long way to go, but man, they are driving the wheels off these cars right now. Alex Bowman to the inside in the 88. Jamie? Pretty decent run for these guys so far tonight. They started this race 27. And coming into this race, Greg Ives, his crew chief, said he really had to think outside the box. They wanted to bring a different package because what they've been doing has not been working. So their main issue was just lacking front grip. Alex is saying that when he gets around other cars, though, he just gets tight. Whoa, and oh. he gets his teammate loose into the wall. William Byron into the wall. 
Stop ready. Coming Inside, off turn two. You're clear. Got pretty hard right rear damage. You're clear to the bottom. Mm, very similar to the three car of Austin Dillon getting into turn one. The back of the car stepped out, got in the wall, Vince. You know, Byron has talked all night long. The one issue they have fought is he just felt like it is just bad loose. And when he tried to put wheel in it, it felt like the back end would snap out. But they thought on the last uh, pit stop, they'd taken a couple of big swings at it. They felt like it was getting better, but it definitely got away from him there. We're under caution at lap 114 for the Liberty University sophomore, William Byron. Well, they said they <clears throat> took a couple of big swings at it. They're going to have to take a couple of really hard swings at it now because <laughs> With it's going to take, take a hammer to it now. You could see our mile per hour meter there showing 190 miles an hour getting into the corner. Slows down to about 160 where that car slides sideways and gets into the wall. Yeah, that back just steps out and you try to catch it and then it shoots to the right. And as a driver, you're committed. You're committed as you turn into that corner. You're putting the wheel into the, you know, the front tires, just hoping those rear tires grab that banking and stick. William Byron racing to remember Army Major Michael Donahue lost in Afghanistan at age 41, an alumnus of Universe, uh, Liberty University, leaving behind a wife and three children. You know, guys, we've only run seven laps. The pits are open. The, the stopwatch had already fallen off a second. But I go back to the conversation between Paul Wolf, Brad Kozlowski's crew chief, and Brad about sets of tires. These teams have 12 sets of tires, including what they started the race on. Most of these teams, except for that two car, Brad Kozlowski, they've already put four on there. So I think they're in a little bit of a box that they're going to have to stay out here simply because of sets of tires left to go the next 285 laps. I know who hopes you're right, Larry, and that's uh, Brad Kozlowski because he's let you let you guys deal with what I had to deal with. There we go, a little split, a little, little trickery. <laughs> Some do, some don't. Eric Jones is in, so is Daniel Suarez, Casey Kane, Kurt Busch, Joey Logano, and more. Looks like about a third of the lead lap cars chose to pit on this caution flag for William Byron.
Speaking of 400 laps complete, we're 18 laps deep into stage two. On the caution for William Byron, Ross Chastain got the free pass. On the previous caution, Landon Castle had an uncontrolled tire. There's an uncontrolled French fry. Uh, <laughs> section 27. Help me, Dad, help me. <laughs> That's good times right there. That, I love that, man. Yep. That's so cool. Call the safety clean, people. They'll, <laughs> they'll take care of it. So last caution, Jamie McMurray took the wave around, and that has proven big for him. He's up in 23rd spot and back on the lead lap. Never did really hear what caused him to come to pit road. We, we know something with tires. They took four tires, but we'd never heard exactly what went wrong there. Remember that last restart where Kyle Busch was being pushed across the line by Martin Truex? Well, Kyle had some thoughts about that. What happened on that start? That's the worst I had wheel spin all night. I don't know if he was close to me or what, but it even got worse as I got closer to start finish, so I know that's when he was getting closer to me, you know? No, he was on you. Yeah, I didn't have air on the blade. 60 miles an hour, I need air on the blade. What little blade there is. <laughs> Well, give Mark Jerks Jr. a lot of credit for how he anticipated that start and got to the rear bumper of Kyle Busch. Unfortunately, it hurt both of them. I think Truex just jacked him up. <laughs> but I think the wheel spin that Kyle's talking about started actually before he actually hit, hit him in the rear bumper. Well, here they come. We're going to do it again. Kyle Busch, Ryan Blaney, green flag. And he gets a nice launch. He did last restart. That outside just prevails. You're going to see this 42 come flying up here on the outside. Kyle yeah. Larson. I was going to say, Blaney better put a big block. He doesn't know which Whoa, way to go. Man, indecisive right there. Oh, Logano three wide into three, oh, top no. to bottom, and there Somebody they go. Goes around right in front of the field. Jimmy, Jimmy Johnson. Johnson. Oh. Joy Logano's around. And everybody missed Johnson. And I don't think even the 22 got. Very substantial uh, damage that, to his car. I, I'm not sure if anybody made contact with anybody, but that was an incredible job by all those guys to miss that. This is in the Joey, front of the field. Joey Logano's run started back between turns one and two, and he had incredible speed, went top to bottom to top again, and then got involved in all this. First, let's see what happens to the 48. Oh, the 11 goes to the inside. A big contact. Yep. Very similar to what we saw in the All Star race. I think it was with the 17, the 78. That turns Jimmy Johnson around. Boy, the 20 was just trying to get slowed down. Was on the rear bumper of the of Logano in the 22, and that's what turned him around. That's amazing. Let's watch from Denny Hamlin. One outside, from behind. One outside. Behind the Bernard car, if you want still outside. Jimmy making that late exit down into the corner. They were racing for fifth. Let's go back to 14th. Here's Logano off turn two. Flying around Chris Busher. Elliott up to block. Logano goes to the bottom oh. under Ricky Stenhouse. Three wide into the corner. And then trouble. That's that one time when you didn't want to get that good of a run. Boy, that was so close to disaster for both of those drivers. Wow. Want to ride with Joey? Hello, clear low still. No runs. There you go, outside. Still there. And outside. Keep running low, though. He's going to come down. Keep coming low. Come on, he's coming down. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Go high. Good, miss. Hold the brake here. Hold the brake. We're going to be fine. Hold the brake. Great job to TJ Majors. That Ooh. was Dale Jr.'s uh, spotter. Now Joey Logano's this year. Yeah, many people think he's the best guy on the, in the business, TJ Majors. Logano did get a little damage. Now look, he's going to miss Johnson. He's going to swerve again to the right and miss him. Look how he stood but on Jones the brakes. Jones just caught him. I, I think the 20 saved him. I think it shot him up the hill just enough that he was able to get around to 48. Well, let's listen in on Jimmy Johnson and company. No contact. Be sure to thank the 11 for being such a great guy. 10-4. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> we got that. Vince? Just a little bit of uh, left rear. <laughs>
quarter panel damage for <laughs> Jimmy Johnson. Chad Canals in a particularly good mood. The uh, the boss uh, on the box uh, tonight, along with the driver Jimmy Johnson. They didn't even have to bring any tools out. Just pulled out that left rear behind the left rear tire. You gotta Jamie? love Earl Barb. <laughs> His crew or his uh, spotter up there at 10 4. <laughs> Jamie? The 22 at Joey Logano, as we had talked about, they had been fighting everything. Then two pit stops ago, a loose left rear. Well, they had just pitted once again before that all happened. He was on fresh tires and he was going forward. As you just saw, he left. He had a little bit of left rear quarter panel damage and they had to put an extra set of tires on. So they were already down a set. So this could be interesting if he gets back in the mix later in this race. So 122 laps are complete here in Charlotte. How about a quick word from the Bush guy and the number four crew? <laughs> Spotters there up on the roof as we get ready to go back to green. Regan. The 11 car, Denny Hamlin had to pit on that stop as well to pull the right front fender. They were looking at it and wanted to try and stay out. Unfortunately, there was too much damage to stay out. They pulled the fender, gave him four tires, and sent him back out. So he will restart 25th. I believe Corey LaJoy is the free pass car, the 72. You know, when I look back at that, I just think Jimmy Johnson didn't realize 11 was that close to right. him and made a big arc into the corner. And I don't think Denny Hamlin knew that Jimmy was going to make that big arc and come down. So, no. I mean, I, I really think that was a racing incident. I do, too. And that's exactly what happened. Jimmy laid out, turned down, and 11 was there. Back under green. Kyle Busch against Kyle Larson this time. These two have battled often. You see the 42 wiggle just a little bit on the bottom there, and that just lets that 18 car Kyle Busch shoot to the front. Truex third, Blaney fourth, Almarola up to fifth. I think, Mike, we've seen that 12 car Blaney. A couple of times Bristol comes to mind where he had the car to beat. A little bit of luck. He could be the man tonight. Matt Kenseth, number six man in the middle for Roush Fenway Racing. Yeah, I saw a little bit of contact that he made with somebody with that right front fender. I see a little bit of smoke. Just a tiny haze off that right front tire of Matt Kenseth. Yeah, let's show you what that's from. I got up into Newman. Chris Busher. Or is that? Yeah, that's right, Busher. That's that's damage to both those cars, the 37 yeah. and the six. I'll be watching that a little bit. I don't like that right front fender rubbing on that tire. Kansas team owner Jack Roush, another of the newly minted NASCAR Hall of Famers, announced this Wednesday. Holy smoly! Inside, outside, in the middle, conveyor belt with friends. Hall of Famer sees both of his cars in the middle three wide the last God. five laps. That's crazy. <laughs> kind of bouncing off each other down that back straightaway. Just saw the 95 and the two look like they made a little light contact. Brad Keselowski knows to tail with Jimmy Johnson. Admire Keselowski's patience after that call to not come for tires, get brake trained all the way to the back, and now just methodically keep coming toward the front in that number two. At 95, Casey Kane up on the outside there, Mike. He was pretty good in our final practice yesterday, too, and that team has been getting a little better every week. And he's got a lot of success here. Kyle Busch coming around to complete 128 laps. Let's crank it up for you. Brought to you by McDonald's. One outside. It's a wall. Clear. Clear. All clear. Quarter. Trying to get outside. 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 Still 
down there, middle of the track, door. Pull it in, bumper, bumper, still barely there. Clear, 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 clear. We are one-third distance in Stock Car Racing's longest night. The Coca-Cola 600, Kyle Busch leading Martin Truex by 2.3. Mike, what I'm loving is this racetrack has come alive. The sun has gone down, it's cooling down, and there's grip everywhere, high, low, middle. These guys are racing hard right now. The lights have come on in Charlotte. Kyle Busch continues to lead. Grab an ice cold Coke and buckle up. You're watching the Coca-Cola 600 on Fox.
Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn, making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR, inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR, with Michael Waltrip, Chris Myers in stage two, and Kyle Busch has dominated this race from the pole, 135 laps later. The story with Kyle Busch is that, oh, it looks like we have William Byron smoking, having some problems here. But Kyle Busch, he's never won a points cup race here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. But Michael, this is the only track of all the tracks going currently that he hasn't won on. He'd be the only driver if he were able to win here who would have a victory on all the tracks. But of course, the night is just beginning. Yeah, he's got a three second lead, Chris, but I'm worried about this team. They, how do you work on a car that that's, is this dominant this early? Because there's some guys back in the pack that are making some nice moves. One of them is Kurt Busch in the 41 car. He's the 2010 winner of this Coca-Cola 600. And Chris, right now his lap times are as good as his brother. So the Busch up front liable to have some company from the other one. Yeah, Kurt Busch, of course, with Stuart Haas, so they've dominated the early portion of the season. Back when he won this race, he was a member of Penske Racing, and they could make history with that Indy 500 win and a Coke 600 win in the same year if one of their drivers goes on to win. Let's go further back in the field in the 43 car, Bubba Wallace. He's running 11th, Chris. Great lap times again, but remember, he went to the back of the pack to start this race. They had to come from the rear. He's methodically worked his way through. He's running 11th right now, and that's where he's been lately. A couple of cars that had fresher tires went by him, but he's been able to hold court and stay right there. So really impressive run for Bubba Wallace here in the Coke 600. And Kurt Busch making his move. And don't forget Martin Truex, who won a record seven races on mile and a half tracks last season. You're defending a champion of the sport and two years ago dominating this race right there behind Kyle Busch and his Toyota. Let's head back upstairs, rejoin Darrell Waltrip, Jeff Gordon, and Mike Jordan. Thanks, Chris. William Byron did make it to pit road where they continue to make repairs on his Chevrolet. Trouble on the right rear from that bout with the wall earlier. Here are two of his Hendrick Motorsport teammates battling for 13th, Alex Bowman and Jimmy Johnson. I think Jimmy's got a pretty good car tonight. I mean, I, you know, if you look at his progress earlier and got up to the top five, had that incident between he and Hammond, he's fight, fighting his way back up there pretty nicely up to uh, 12th, 13th place. Penny Hamlin battling Ryan Newman for seventh. Yeah, Johnson restarted, what, 26th and uh, got himself up now to 13th position. Vince. Hey, how about Ryan Newman? Remember, Newman had that uh, penalty on pit lane. Too many men over the wall when they stopped for the first time on lap 39. Had to go all the way to the back. He was inside the top five when they got that penalty, and he has run himself well up inside the top ten again. He's dropped down to eighth, but he was up a couple of more spots. So Luke Lambert has that 31 tuned up. They've been pretty uh, happy with it this weekend. Qualified well. They've been good in practice, and they were very optimistic coming into the race tonight. Now we see why. 47 of the 100 laps of stage two are now complete. Pit stops may be in the offing when we come back.
in stage two. There's your leader, Kyle Busch. And we listen in on second place, Martin Truex, four seconds back. Yeah, so this year, they, the teams have access to far more data than they ever had before. Loop data and, and you know, throttle position, brake position. Uh, and so that's information that Cole Pern and his engineers have been analyzing, laying over the 18 of Kyle Busch to say, here's where we believe he's gaining on us and what we need to do. And now, what can I do to help you, you know, back that corner up and get back to the throttle earlier? Let's go back one spot to Kyle Larson in third. Now seven and a half back. Best Chevy in the field so far tonight. 42 car Larson. He's been running the bottom a lot. Surprise me. Denny Hamlin has moved up to fourth place. He was chasing Ryan Blaney. And here's what happened. Uh -oh, oops. And, and see that's that's right before you, you get into the traction compound so that car stepped out on him a little bit and then it caught as he got to that traction compound that was a that was a moment so Larry we are 44 laps away from the end of the stage and Ricky Stenhouse has just made a pit stop yeah Mike when I look at Kyle Busch Martin Trex Jr. Kyle Larson and Ryan Blaney they're going to be forced to come to pit road I'd say in the next six to eight laps, but I think about Denny Hamlin and Mike Wheeler, they can go another 20 laps and they are, are known for trying to stretch it out and pin some drivers down. So now both the Roush Fenway cars have stopped. Matt Kenseth in for right side tires. Kyle Larson in, getting down to the speed limit. Yeah, don't do like they did in All Star. <laughs> no. <laughs> Had that the tire smoking when he came on pit road, but I think he got it. I think he got it woed up. Clint Boyer's in as well. Green flag stops, Matt. Mike, you're seeing pit boards waving up and down pit road. The two is expected soon. Kyle Larson. You can see the wrench in the back window. They're going to adjust him. The balance was good in the middle lane. A little bit freer though on the bottom, Vince. The 14 of Clint Boyer just a little bit too snug, so they're going to make a chassis adjustment. Four tires for the 14 inside the top 10, Matt. Wrench is in the back window of the, the blue deuce. Brad Keselowski, right side's going on. Earlier they had to pit again. They had loose lugs on the left rear, trying to get up with that balance. A good turn of the wrench. He's away. Truex done. Blaney in, Almarola, Menard, Bowman, and more. Jamie. And the 12 of Ryan Blaney, he said he's just too tight when he runs the bottom, too loose up top. He just didn't have any confidence in turning the wheel. You saw the chassis adjustment there, a wedge adjustment, air pressure on four tires. Your leader, Kyle Busch, in the box as well. Kyle Busch with that last pit stall comes to a halt as Ryan Newman leaves. Jamie? Kyle Busch has been pretty happy with this car. Just a little bit tight on exit, but just hasn't said a whole lot. He's been outside, out front in clean air, Vince. The nine of Chase Elliott getting better, but he just still doesn't have enough grip the way he wants. So that's what they've been working on throughout the course of the race, just trying to get it to stick a little bit better, Matt. You can see Clay Robinson and Steven Todges working those left side wheels, putting those lugs back on. The 19 car Suarez too tight this past run. So just 14 cars on the lead lap at this moment, Larry. Yeah, now what you've got, you've got Hamlin Johnson, Eric Jones, Joy Logano. Remember, they pitted under that last cost at that 121. They're going to be giving up time on the stopwatch. But what they have right now, we only have 12 drivers on the lead lap. I think they'll run it here for a little bit, at least maybe another 10 to 15 laps. Same strategy for Casey Kane, David Reagan, Michael McDowell, Ross Chastain, Corey LaJoy, all hoping to catch a caution and pin some of these quality cars a lap down that have made their pit stops. Yeah, and sometimes you're forced into a different strategy, and, and lo and behold, it doesn't work. And so I think that's what we're seeing here. These guys are forced into a little different, different strategy. It may pay off for them. 
Now through the cycle Denny Hamlin uh, was fourth nine and a half seconds back. Kyle had a four second lead over Martin Truex in second. Looks like Eric Jones may come in. Mike he's one of the ones on that last caution all they did is worked on the fender they did not actually take four tires so that's probably why Chris Gale is thinking about bringing Eric to pit road. And here he comes. Regan. Eric Jones hits his pit stall. It's the first pit box in off of the racetrack. They fixed that damage the last time. The crew guys said it looked really good from their perspective. They're not concerned about it for the rest of the race. His biggest problem in the car has been bouncing over the bumps into turn three. They're going to give him four tires fuel and a small adjustment for the bouncing. David Reagan in as well on the right of your screen, and that leaves us just ten cars. Well, it'll be nine on the lead lap. Mike I had a lot of drivers tell me that the track was the bumpiest they ever remember it but then I hear the crew chiefs and some of the guys talking about most aggressive setup they've ever run here too. Jimmy Johnson's in Vince. Yeah it's just going to be a four tire stop for Jimmy. They've been really pleased with their car. They haven't taken any big swings at all. Just a little bit of an air pressure adjustment throughout the course of the night. And remember he had to go to the back after spinning earlier with that little bit of contact with Denny Hamlin and he still drove his way back inside the top ten. The best car I've seen out of the 48 this season. Johnson's away and hearing chatter on the 11 radio that the leader may come. He's just giving up so much time on the stopwatch right now to all these fresh tires Mike. Now here he comes there. We know how aggressive Denny Hamlin is on pit road. Can he do it and keep it clean. Joey Logano will take over the lead as Hamlin rolls to a halt. Regan. Danny Hamlin hits his pit marks perfectly. His race car has been good in clean air, just a little bit too tight otherwise for the rest of the for the most of the night. They're going to give him four tires and no adjustment. Log jam out of turn that two. Incredible. Cars like Jimmy Johnson on fresh tires, battling those with worn tires. Daniel Suarez and Casey Kane almost had a meeting up in turn four last time by. Yeah, that was looking, 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 and that was about four different cars that were looking. You know, this this tire is a little bit softer than what we saw here a year ago. And here's a replay. The 19 is Suarez gets loose underneath Casey Kane. Boy, great nice. job. Nice catch. Not to make contact, but look. That's what happened where everybody like Alex Bowman, Jimmy Johnson, Paul Menard and McMurray all come barreling down on those guys. But but give credit to Goodyear. You know this is a tire they tried in the All Star race a year ago. They ran it last week in the All Star race brought it back here this weekend. This tires got a little bit more grip. It's a little more rubber but it has a lot more fall. So tires are really playing into the hand more so than ever before. Jamie. Well, the 22 of Joey Logano is leading this race right now. Remember, they got themselves in a bit of a hole earlier when they had that loose wheel, and then they had that damage. It was a great save, but he still had that left rear damage. The team just told me he needs to stay out about another 15 laps at least, because as it sits right now, they have five sets of stickers left and one set of scuffs, and we're not even halfway yet. Boy, the closing rate on guys that have tires yeah. versus guys that don't have tires is frightening. Yes, it is. We're about 14 minutes away from sunset. The lights have come on at Charlotte. Track temp down to 95 degrees. Business picking up.
Patrick by Jake Owen. A big time at Z-Max Dragway. 175 laps complete here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Kyle Busch has retaken the lead. Martin Truex Jr. back in second now. Joey Logano to third. Mike, all I can say is it's a good thing that all grooves are working right now because these fast cars, when they run up on the slower car, uh, they don't know which way to go. And now that the green flag cycle of pit stops has completed, everyone back to Chris Busher in 23rd position is on the lead lap. Here's your Toyota top performers. And we're starting to see Kyle Busch do something we haven't seen him do a lot of tonight, and that is run the bottom groove. He's been really working that middle groove really well, and that traction compound's been paying off for him. But now that track temp's starting to come down. I think the grip level's starting to go up. I think now he can start running that bottom groove more. Yeah, I, I know we got a long way to go, but this 18 car tonight reminds me of that 78 car a couple of years ago. That thing is on a rail, running just a little quicker than everybody else. Well, the Joe Gibbs team, the four car team, does have an alliance with Furniture Row Racing. They are both Toyota factory teams. Uh, that fives them. And they've been fast here all weekend. Yes, well, sir. we questioned a couple of years ago, and maybe even last year, which way the information was going. It seemed like it was all going from Gibbs over to Furniture Row. Seems like that's starting to go back the other direction a little bit now. You look at Joey Logano on the 22 car. Now, he has fallen back to third, and they are basically almost running over him. But I think here's what Todd Gordon is thinking and doing to Jamie's point about already using an additional set of tires. He's probably going to pit in the next five laps. If we get a caution between then and the end of stage two, what he would do is stay out and take the wave around and get his lap back. He's going to go at least a lap down when he pits under green here. So they're just trying to run it as far as they can for that reason. And, and then that's what I like about these stages. We know there's going to be one, there's going to be a caution and uh, at, uh, at 200 laps. 21 and, uh, to go. So you, 21 to go. So you can kind of plan around that and how you're going to approach it. Two of the Gibbs teammates trade 14th place. Eric Jones passed last year's rookie of the year. Passing Daniel Suarez. You know, I thought Brad Keselowski would march his way back to the front and would get there in a little more of a hurry, Matt. He's currently in 20th. Mike, the military names across the windshields tonight, up and down pit road, it certainly brings heavy hearts, but it hits home even more for Team Penske. Tonight, Gunnery Sergeant Chris Eckert's life is remembered on the two car. Eckert was more than childhood pals with Penske employee Casey Mahoney. They were best friends and, in fact, best man in each other's weddings. Eckert enlisted in the Marines in 2001. After several tours of duty and reenlistment, he was lost in Afghanistan in 2010, leaving behind wife Ashley and two sons, Stephen and Avery. He was posthumously awarded the Purple Heart. Thank you, Matt. Kozlowski in 20th behind Paul Menard and Bubba Wallace. With 19 to go, stage two will mark the halfway point of the race. Only two cars out of the competition, Kevin Harvick and William Byron. Fifth place at stake here. And there's the difference between coming in early to get those four fresh tires like Ryan Blaney did or staying out a little bit longer. Now it's really paying off for the 11 and that you know just has that extra bit of grip because he doesn't have as many laps on those four fresh Goodyears. Yeah, I like that 12 car though, Jeff. He's he's hanging around the top five or six. Been there all night long so far. That car looks really good. And look on the left of your screen at our scoring pylon at the top nine. Only one of those drivers has a win in the Coca-Cola 600. Martin Truex. I thought we were going to try to stump Larry on that one. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, his crew jumped up on the wall about three laps ago, so they, they, they've got to come for fuel here in the next lap or two. Issue with the 12 of Blaney. Jamie? Ryan's talking on the radio right now. He has an issue. He's not sure if he's running out of gas. He's on the splitter. It's sputtering right now, he's saying, so they're not sure what's going on, if it's an engine issue or not, but his team is ready if he needs to bring it down and pit. Well, he was on pit road on lap 158. Yeah, it's probably uh, an electrical 27 issue. laps ago. Our cameramen are saying it does not sound good as it comes by. Yeah, yeah I think he's got a mechanical or electrical issue where oh. he's either lost a cylinder or two or he's having some kind of alternator issue. 14 laps to go in stage two. We'll take you Fox NASCAR side by side. Welcome back to the Coca-Cola 600 on Fox. Eight laps to go in stage two, which will be halfway. You saw Daniel Suarez make another pit stop. He had a tire issue and pitted from 16th, going two laps down. Joey Logano made his stop. He's gone one lap down. We have 17 lead lap cars as we approach the end of the second stage. Now, Ryan Blaney thought he had an issue, but he's driven through it and continues in 10th place with just seven to go in this stage, Jamie. And the 12 of Ryan Blaney, they're trying to diagnose from the pits what's happening. All the engineers, the Roush Yates guys are here. 
They just told him, asked him, are there any codes showing on the dash? He's not seeing anything out of the ordinary as of now, saying his fuel pressure is good. Now he's seeing red, and he said, should I keep running? They said, yes, keep running till it blows. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we don't need those gauges. They're never accurate. <laughs> Roush Yates engines, led by second-generation engine builder Doug Yates, puts the power to all the Fords in the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. Unfortunately, they could pit and plug a computer into the port for the ECU and know exactly what's going on, but you can't do that on pit road. You have to go behind the wall to do that. I tell you, the one guy I've watched all night long is that guy in that red car, right? I want you to look how look how close to, he's been at that high line ever since this race started. You get got to give him credit. He is very committed to it. <laughs> right on the wall, Regan. He's consistent, Regan. Well, we've seen the one car on pit road a couple times. We thought he had a tire going down. It wasn't actually a tire going down. There was a vibration on that car. Two separate sets of tires had a severe vibration. They still haven't diagnosed what that was. McMurray in 11th, his Chip Ganassi teammate Kyle Larson in third as we close in on halfway. There's Larson. Jeff, how, I'll ask you this, how frustrating it is for Larson to be running third, and you're back here, Jamie McMurray, and you're doing everything you can, and the best you can do here is run the top 10 or 12. Is that... How frustrating is that? I feel like you're asking me because maybe I know a little bit of something. <laughs> I thought you might something about this. I, no, it's extremely frustrating. You know, when you are at an organization and you feel like you guys are sharing all the information you could possibly share and you know what the setups are, but yet they're getting more out of it than you are, you start scratching your head, losing your own confidence. Second place, Martin Truex, three seconds back of the lead with three to go in the stage. You were riding with Kyle Larson a bit ago. He's about nine seconds back. Denny Hamlin, 12 back in fourth. Clint Boyer, 18 seconds off the lead, but in the top five, there's Boyer. He is the highest place forward in the race, just ahead of his teammate, Eric Almarola, a second behind him. And Chase Elliott, filling up his rearview mirror in seventh. Elliott's teammate Jimmy Johnson is eighth. Ryan Newman for Richard Childress Racing, ninth in another Chevrolet. And then Eric Jones rounds out the top ten. He got the final stage point in stage one. One more lap. Team Penske, bit of a disappointment at halfway. Only one car on the lead lap, and that is Ryan Blaney. After a mixture of strategy calls. Here comes Kyle Busch. Candyman trying to make it a perfect night here in Charlotte. Gets his fourth stage win of 2018. Well, Ryan not, Truex fourth in stage one, second in this stage. Kyle Larson again third. They may not stick in your hands, but I can tell you one thing, that car is stuck to the track. <laughs> Kyle Busch, the winner of stage one and stage two.
Pit road will be open this time as we cross through halfway and night descends on Charlotte Motor Speedway. Kyle Busch winner of the first two stages leads them on to pit road. Here's Regan. Danny Hamlin heads towards his pit stall. A very nice recovery for a team that had to pull a fender two stops ago. Right now his race car takes a little too long to come in. He's free on entry and tight in the rest of the corner. Vince. The 14 of Clint Boyer pitting from the fifth spot. He just is on top of the track. They just haven't had the grip that they've wanted all night. He said the car is loose and the track is getting freer. Chassis adjustment, four tires, Matt. And Kyle Larson started off neutral. Then he burned off that right front. The car went to the tight side as pit crew certainly polishing their game against Stephen Price, Michael Roberts, the changers. 16 seconds, Jamie. The 78 of Martin Truex Jr. says he has a headache from his head hitting that headrest nonstop. No front turn, four tires, air pressure. Kyle Busch, the class of the field tonight, said the car is good, balance is great. All he wanted was a Gatorade. Well, he got that Sunoco race fuel and four Goodyear tires, and he's out front. Adam Stevens, Larry McReynolds in the Fox Sports booth. Uh, buddy, is, is it almost scary when you've got one running this good from green flag to halfway? Scary? No, this is what we live for. This is why we do it. <laughs> so, uh, all the 600 people back at Joe Gibbs Racing put their heart and soul to this program uh, so we can be out here leading laps. Well, Adam, I don't know if you've had to adjust on the car much, but this track's probably going to start going through some transition here. We're almost to nighttime. Do you, do you think you're going to have to get aggressive with some with some adjustments, even though it's this good? Yeah, it's been pretty calm here taking off, but uh, this is about the time of the race where we really start to see the track change. The speed will pick up, split our travel a little bit more, and uh, we'll have to really start working on this race car. Well, good luck, buddy. It's hard to believe three years ago you made your first start here with Kyle Busch when he returned from those injuries. So good luck. Thanks, Larry. Stage two winner, Kyle Busch. Who got caught for speeding on pit stops after this?
Fire extinguisher. Got it over there. Put it out, put it out. I think it blew one of the front tires. Yeah, it's a left front. Be sure to thank the eleven for being such a great guy. 10-4. Some of the action so far in Charlotte tonight. Martin Truex Jr. just received his second speeding penalty of 2018, too fast entering Pit Road. Earlier, Larry McReynolds filed this report from the eBay Motors pit box. Motors. David Reagan got the free pass. And we're good to go as they approach the Geico restart zone. Kyle Bush and Denny Hamlin, teammates in Toyotas in front of Kyle Larson and Clint Boyer. Green flag. Did you say Clint Boyer? Uh, no, I thought you know <laughs> it's funny you said it. Because earlier in the race, remember we said, what's wrong with Boyer? Nothing wrong with him now. We know the night time is the right time in this race. And now everybody on fresh tires. Just heading off into turn three back there at about 205, somewhere in that range. Now I say everybody. A couple drivers stayed out and took the wave around. Uh, Joey Logano and Casey Kane. Oh, contact. Whoa, man, McMurray. I was just getting ready to say how aggressive these drivers are being on these restarts because track position so critical. We see them really pushing the limits. That stepped over the limit. Oh yeah, I don't know who McMurray got into, but he almost he almost wiped out. Thought it was maybe Stenhouse. Let's see what happens here. Coming off turn four. Watch the one. Ooh, Ooh. he's serious. Yes. That he was Ricky hard Stenhouse. in the left rear of the 17 car. That was. Unbelievable that they didn't wreck. We're going to have to watch for that right front fender if it's going to cause any issues for the right front tire on the one of McMurray. Looks like that one car. Oh, that left rear is rubbing yeah, on the yeah, 17th Stenhouse. I think what happened, the one came off the corner and he just all of a sudden lost the arrow, got an arrow push and got into the side of 17. I don't know if he was thought he was going to jump in behind the 17 to Stenhouse, but certainly looked like it took off on him. Stenhouse racing to remember that Air Force Sergeant John Chapman will try to give you more of those service men and women's stories as our race rolls on. Mike Pace picks up a little bit after every one of these restarts. 29, 8, 89, 29, 81 that time. That's pretty fast. Things cooling down here in Charlotte. The ambient temperature continues to fall. Track temp stays about the same. Jeff, what is it about the urgency to pass people when you're on new tires? Yeah, well, we, you've got the most grip. You can push the limits of the car because it will take it. It'll stick, especially if you think you have a car that is really good for one or two or three laps. So you'll push the limit. And the reason you'll do that is because track position is so difficult to get once everything levels out. Everything, once the air pressures come up the tires, seems like it's really hard to make those passes for at least the next 25 or 30 laps of a run. Like the pass Kurt Busch in the 41 was trying to make there unsuccessfully on Alex Bowman. Here comes Bubba Wallace around the outside of Paul Menard. And that's why we have the traction compound. You know, that's Charlotte Motor Speedway and NASCAR saying, hey, look, we want to create multiple grooves here so it's not quite as hard. We're seeing better racing than we've seen the 600 in a long time, if you ask me. So, you know, I, I give my hats off to the track and everybody for making that multiple groove track that we have. And Mike, some, some guys are just more aggressive. 
I mean, they got a bunch of cars in front of them. They'll go low, they'll go high, they'll go into between them because they know that's their only shot of getting by those guys. So when, when you got them bunched up like that, you try to get as many of them as you can. But, Mike, that back straightaway is 1,500 feet long, and they're literally going into turn three at right around 200 miles an hour. That's wow. that, Those cars are flying around here. Ford versus Chevrolet for fifth place. Wow, what a oh, move by Chase big. Elliott. Made that look easy. Now, Ryan Blaney's back there toward the tail end of the lead lap now in 18th place. What's up, Jamie? Well, Mike, tonight is all about remembering the fallen service men and women. And even though Ryan Blaney's having issues, it still remains true that Sergeant Kubik is on the windshield. They are remembering him and the life that he gave for our freedom. He died in Afghanistan in 2010. Ryan Flores is the front changer for the 12 team. Ryan, what does it mean to you to honor your good friend here tonight? Uh, NASCAR is just such a privilege they give us and Team Penske to, uh, to be able to put friends and family on these cars. And, uh, and Ron was just such a great dude. I know his family's back at home uh, New Jersey watching this. So, uh, you know, big thanks to them for getting on board with this. And uh, Ron came to a couple races with us back in 2009. And the last one he came to, uh, we won at Talladega. So he had some hot passes. He got to come to Victory Lane. So we were hoping to get him back uh, to Victory Lane tonight. Looks like we have a little bit of a problem with the motor. but. Uh, we're not going to stop fighting for him and all these guys just like they fought for us. So just a big honor. Thank you for doing that. And they're going to take his name off the windshield and give that to his mom after tonight's race, Mike. Thanks, Jamie. Kubik, age 21, from Brielle, New Jersey, lost in 2010. Two hundred twenty three complete seventy seven to go in stage three. Kyle Busch has now led two hundred two laps of this race. Joey Logano twelve. Denny Hamlin his teammate has led seven. Brad Kozlowski two. 
Denny Hamlin is two seconds back. Let's ride shotgun with Hamlin with our Coca-Cola share a Coke share a ride. Gained about a tenth down that straightaway. Yeah, and you see how much movement there is just from our camera. And that's that's his head bouncing around. We just heard. Got a little trash on the grill, yeah, sounds you like. You see a little bit of flashing red on this screen. That water tip is going up. Got to watch that. They won't, the, the, his engine don't like that. Anything. So they, they color coordinate that dash with the numbers. You see green for pit road speed. That we see the numbers are just when they're normal, they're white. Oh, spin off and turn four. Back it down. Back it down. He's in the grass. Track is clear. Track is clear. He's in the grass. Break Alding, four laps down. And the BK Racing Toyota was running 33rd. And that will put us under caution. Nice Officially break. for the seventh time tonight. Nice break for Hamlin. But we get that trash off his grill. Yeah, you're right. Paul Menard will get the free pass. Just loses it in the middle, turns yeah. three and four. A caution, a benefit for Casey Kane and Joey Logano, who took a wave around on the last caution flag to get back on the lead lap. Boy, that is going to work out great for them. Galding spin is a break for Hamlin. That piece of trash has now fallen from the grill area. Do you see what Kyle Busch did there, Mike? He get, went way down on the apron to get a throw. Or I think it maybe it was Denny Hamlin. I could tell it was Hamlin or Bush, but one of them threw a water Bush. bottle out. Got down on the apron and threw it out. He's got to make some room for that next bottle of water. <laughs> that's ready to be put in there. That one's empty. Got to have another. Or at least a cold one. There you go. There you go. Pit road is open. They're headed for Regan. Denny Hamlin continues his steady progression forward tonight. Right now his race car just a little bit free on that particular run. He looks for his pit stall, hits the sign. They're going to give him four tires, a small air pressure adjustment with the race car. Vince? The nine of Chase Elliott pitting from the top five. You know, they've been missing raw speed throughout most of this season, but they've been pretty stout today. No major changes. It's very manageable for Chase, Matt. And the 42 of Kyle Larson, the center of your screen, he grazed the wall at one point, but his team looked at the right side. Didn't look like any damage. He said the car just too free this run. No side bite, Jamie. Kyle Busch led 205 laps so far tonight. All he wanted was water and ice. No changes, four tires stop. Heck of a stop by the 11 bunch, I can tell you that. Kyle Busch remains your leader from teammate Denny Hamlin. <laughs>
and Martin Truex will be starting out back for uncontrolled tires on the pit stop. Top of the windshield on the Toyota XSE Camry that uh, leads the field, Captain Weber, uh, along with others that were lost in a training plane crash in Mississippi in 2017. And they're all memorialized on the pace cars and support vehicles in use here during this Coca-Cola 600. Brett Bodine, pace car driver, former driver. He makes the left turn and they head for the Geico restart zone. Now you may have thought when we went to break that Denny Hamlin beat Kyle Busch off pit road, but that camera where they uh, measure who won the pit road race, it's only 15 feet off the end of the box of the 18 car. Those guys are going to be tough to beat on pit road and they're tough to beat on the racetrack too. Look at that huge run the 18 gets on the outside of the 11. Okay, uh, and that car, that 18 car is absolutely unbelievable how fast it is. Oh, he's got some, a little bit of heat coming from the 42 of Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson seems to have a lot of speed on these restarts. He's going to need a lot of speed on his restart <laughs> if he's going to get up there and race that 18. That thing is on the that thing is on the railing going. Big run into sixth for Chase Elliott into seventh along with Jamie McMurray there, sixth and seventh. Mike, I don't know how much bigger this racetrack is up next to the wall, but Jamie McMurray is going to run about 650 yep. miles tonight. <laughs> I'll now this is a veteran driver move right here. Kyle Busch saw where Kyle Larson was getting a big run off of turn two by running that middle to higher groove and down the back straightaway. And he moved up that time and look how much time was lost to the 42 of Larson. In career laps led at Charlotte, Kyle Busch tonight has passed on the all time list. Darrell Waltrip, Casey Kane, Mark Martin and Buddy Baker. He's led over 1200 laps there. That group I just mentioned have 18 combined wins here to Kyle's zero. <laughs> Vince. Well, the 48 of Jimmy Johnson, you see moving past the 20 of Eric Jones. Johnson back inside the top 10. They had an issue on that last pit stop. Uh, the uh, jack malfunctioned, so that cost him a couple of spots on pit road, a much slower stop. The good news is their car continues to be very solid tonight. Not as much grip that last run, but that's the only complaint Jimmy's had about it tonight. Two Toyotas, three Fords, five Chevrolets in the top 10. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, you look at Elmarola and, and Boyer, SHR cars right there, both running uh, in the top five right now. Those cars are running pretty good. Kyle Busch made a rare mistake here last Saturday night. He dipped his left front tire into the grass after the start finish line coming through the quad oval area and crashed in the all star race. A rare miscue by certainly a top caliber driver in this sport. And we saw a similar thing happen in the Xfinity race yesterday. I said last Saturday. Did you mean? Oh, you meant meant yesterday. I meant last Saturday okay, as in yesterday, <laughs> not the all-star race, all -star the race. Xfinity <laughs> race. Oh, how quickly we forget. Thank you. <laughs> I thought, Mike, I no. believed you. I thought, you know what? He must have done that in the All-Star race. Too. <laughs> it, was a good, it was a good story, wasn't it? No, that was yesterday. Brian Newman showed a lot of strength here tonight. Currently battling to get back up into the top 10, but the Childress cars have shown speed here. Well, and, and there's another Chevrolet in the nine of, of L, uh, Chase Elliott. And I just wonder, you know, those Chevrolets have been behind and they've been working extremely hard. We hear them talking about a lot. Yeah, Larson showed some speed, but I'm starting to see some more out of the other Chevrolets like the nine of Chase Elliott. What do you have down there, Vince? 
you know, I was talking with Alan Gustafson about that and whether they're turning the corner, and he said it's so hard because everyone constantly, no matter what manufacturer you're from, continually working on your equipment, they definitely feel like they're getting better. He said the issue is that they work so hard and the effort is there. When the results don't show, you got to really work to keep your morale up, and they have been challenged by that. But he said tonight it would be very important. Four stages, make sure you collect points at every opportunity, and they've done a nice job with that tonight. Good car in the nine. Yeah, you know, Vince, I was over there earlier this week, and I can tell you one thing, it is not from lack of effort. The pit crews were practicing, practicing pit stops. The, in the, Chassis guys were building chassis. The body guys were putting on bodies. They just got their OSS machine over there. A lot of work going on to get caught up here. Martin Truex about again catching up. Yeah. trying to overcome a penalty. Passing uh, Bubba Wallace for 17th, Jamie. And Bubba Wallace doing a nice job tonight. Remember, he's a rookie. Finished second Daytona 500. And tonight is the first time he's ever run a 600-mile race. I asked Drew Blickenster for his crew chief, what do you do with a rookie in a race like this? He said, I will remind him early and often, go hard, but let's stay focused and stay hydrated. He's done a good job with it. He's saying right now the car is just super sensitive. He can't really run the top, but they feel like they're getting better. They made a wedge adjustment and four tires last stop. Thanks, Jamie. Daniel Suarez making a stop under green, as is Parker Kligerman. 241 laps complete, 59 to go, stage three. Grab an ice cold Coke and buckle up. You're watching the Coca-Cola 600 on Fox. Two hundred forty seven laps complete fifty three to go in stage three Kyle Busch has led two hundred twenty six laps 
Let's take a look at tonight's Credit One Bank ones to watch. Mike Bart Jr. led 392 laps to dominate this 600 two years ago. He's having all kinds of issues on pit road. He's going to overcome those, and he's only going to lead one lap here tonight to win the 600 again. Jeff, Eric Almarola is looking for his first top five finish of 2018. He's looking for his first top 10 in the Coke 600, running fourth. If crew chief Johnny Klausmeyer can stay on his game, he might become the third Stuart Haas racing driver to get a win this year. Hey, Larry Mack, I'm, I'm Kyle Busch, and uh, I'm trying to see where second place is. Oh, stop because it. Because I don't know exactly who to worry about. Kyle Busch, he goes to victory circle tonight. Darrell, you better worry about his teammate, Denny Hamlin. Hamlin's won the Daytona 500. He's won the Southern 500. He wants this crown jewel on his resume. He's got two third place finishes this season. Talked to him earlier this week. He said, if I'm in the top five at the end of the third stage, we're going to win this race. Kyle Larson has a lot of nevers going for him. He's never won on a mile and a half track. Chip Ganassi has never won the Coca-Cola 600. Maybe today is the 42nd of never. Whatever that means. Kyle Larson. <laughs> and those are your Credit One Bank ones to watch. Talk about low-hanging fruit, Daryl. <laughs> it was too easy. Yes, well, like, hey, he's never won here, so, you know, he got to overcome that. There's a lot of never going on. Normally, I'd take Harvick against the field, but he's you still out, can. You know, he's you still out. can. No, he went home already. That's right. J.J. Yaley, William Byron, Kevin Harvick are the three cars out of the race as we're 50 laps past halfway. Chase Elliott with a good runoff turn two. Here's Jamie yeah, McMurray nobody has a steaming up the outside. Y'all go on down there and fight for the bottom. I'm going to sail around the top. Watch this thing go around the outside. He has been doing that all night long. You know, last week they put aerodynamic ducts and a big rear spoiler on these cars for the All-Star race. And I think Jamie Mack's driving like they still have that setup. <laughs> he is wheeling it. We know he's aggressive. And he is running about the most aggressive line that anybody out there tonight. Well, and what's interesting is typically his teammate Kyle Larson's the one up there right up against the wall. I think he's learned a little bit from Kyle Larson. He said, you know what? If you don't want to run the top, I'm going to do it tonight. Well, I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad that wall can't talk because <laughs> it would be talking to him. Eric Almarola in the top half does in their sixth place, Matt. Almarola and Cucci Johnny Klausmeyer certainly have gelled quickly and they've been consistent this year. The past three races, they finished 11th or better. Like you mentioned, Larry Mack did just looking for their first top five of the season. The car had been tight a couple of runs earlier. The previous run, it finally was neutral. But now he says it has swung back to the tight side. A little bit of damage on the left rear fender. They had to pull that out. But right now he's just running in the sixth position, trying to hold there until their next stop. Matt Kenseth had a tough night. He's back on pit road under green. You know, talking about Matt, he said this was not going to be a short term project, getting his six car back to where he wanted it to be. He wasn't lying. He's trying to stay within one lap of the leaders. And uh, David Reagan, the Georgia driver, has been up against the wall. There he goes. Up and in. Now that. You know, we've seen where the slightest bit of damage, that's really about the same contact the three of Austin Dillon had earlier in this race. That ended up cutting down his right rear tire. Yeah, that was kind of lightly and slightly. Yeah, this is Austin Dillon, 52 laps down after having a similar problem. Look but at Murray <laughs> in the one. Get out of my way, coming through. <laughs> Man, what's he doing down there on the bottom of the racetrack? He's like, no, 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 my car likes the top. He just loves to race. Races go-karts for fun and to stay in shape. Races a bicycle, climbed Mount Mitchell a couple weeks ago on that two-wheeler. Yeah. Well, he just raced his way into fourth place, I can well, tell you that. And he also, he ran the 300-mile race here yesterday, so he's going for 900 miles. Here at Charlotte, 144 laps to go, Kyle Busch. And you know, Joe Gibbs Toyota is pretty much dominated, leading uh, all but 21 laps so far. Kevin Harvick, one of the pre-race favorites, had to start in the back due to inspection issues and had a short race out of it after cutting a tire and banging the wall at lap 83. Kyle Larson in a Chevrolet. Denny Hamlin in a Toyota. 
Chase Elliott and Jamie McMurray and Chevy's perhaps the biggest threats to Kyle Busch here with 143 to go. I'll just remind people last year about this time at Toyota's. Oh, trouble turn four, guys. Chris Busher. Yeah, he got Flat some right side tires now. Damage, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, he got into the wall. Caution. Eighth one of the night, lap 258. But real quick, Mike, just a reminder, last year this time, the Toyotas had done nothing. And about this time last year, they cranked it up and they won a lot of races. Watch out for those Chevrolet guys. Right now we got three of them in the top five. That's a huge improvement for them. Busher makes it to his pit stall. And Michael McDowell will get the free pass on this eighth caution flag. As we go to caution, how about a quick word from Duracell? Eighth caution flag of the night. And the sixth for contact. And let me make a correction on our, our pace car. The second pace car and other track vehicles are honoring those lost in that crash uh, in the southeast in Mississippi. Captain Mark Weber of the U.S. Air Force was lost at age 29 on the border of Iraq and Syria. He was from Bartonsville, Texas, graduated of the Air Force Academy, as were two of his sisters. He leaves behind his parents and four sisters. Captain Weber was 29 as we race to remember tonight. Pits are open. Here come the leaders. Regan. And Danny Hamlin heads down pit road yet again. Mike Wheeler is going to try and free this race car up in the center just a little bit for him. He's going to raise the track bar in the race car. They're going to give him a small air pressure adjustment outside of the race car to help that out also. Vince. A real solid run for this nine team. Chase Elliott just told uh, Alan Gustafson, and the crew chief, it's really nice. Don't make any changes. So just four tires, Matt. Hard to believe Kyle Larson's never won in a mile and a half six times. He's finished second. The balance has gone to the tight side. No water bottle needed, and he's away 14.1. Kyle Busch likes his car now more than when the sun was out. He's happy with it. A four tire stop and air pressure adjustment. He remains the leader. A lot of pressure when you have that number one pit stall from winning the pole is you are under pressure to be out first every time and Kyle Busch's crew is delivered.
Nice to have you watching this Memorial Day weekend. Time for a Coca-Cola race break. Michael Walter, Chris Myers, a quick recap. This is last year's winner, Austin Dillon, stage one, a tire issue. They work on the car. Later catches fire on pit road. He went 50 laps down in a hurry out of contention. Then Kevin Harvick worked his way up into the top 10, still in segment one, but into the wall, turn four, and the guy who's dominated this season done for the day. But then a restart, stage two, Jimmy Johnson, Denny Hamlin. Wow, Denny dove into a hole, and Jimmy closed that door, and around he went. But watch the job Joey Logano does there. Amazing saving that race car, keeping from running over Jimmy Johnson. And Kyle Busch taking stages one, stage two. This is the only four stage race we have. We're closing in on stage three as we welcome you back inside the Hollywood Hotel. So Kyle Busch, who's never won here, we keep talking about that because he's the only driver who's won on every other track that's active. But if he wins here, he would certainly check that off his list. We're talking about a cup points race. Is he the guy? And so far, he's been the dominant driver. Does it take a mistake from Kyle Busch for him not to win? I wouldn't go so quick with that, Chris, because Kyle Larson has a really fast car and we know how he moves around the track as it changes toward the end of this race that could, come a, could become a big advantage for him and just think about Chase Elliott he ran his fastest lap on lap 210 of this race Kyle Busch's fastest lap was way back on lap two that means Chase Elliott's gotten that car better and better he could become a factor here late a lot to watch for and from day to night the adjustments that have taken place and are continuing to take place that's your Coca-Cola race break nice to have you watching the Coca-Cola 600 as we're closing it on Stage three, they're getting ready to go green. Let's go back upstairs. Darrell Waltrip, Jeff Gordon, and Mike Joy. Thank you, Chris. Getting set for the restart with teammates Bush and Hamlin up front. This is the 10th time Kyle Bush has led over 240 laps in a race. Of the previous nine, he won three. Back under green. Good jump by Bush. I wouldn't count out Mick Murray either. I mean, you know, he has shown a lot of speed in these closing laps, showing a lot right now as he might challenge for second on the outside of Denny Hamlin. Yeah, Tony Horseman, the spotter for Kyle Busch, warned him about people running the high line, that that really looked like it was paying off for McMurray particularly. Oh, boy. Whoa, 11 close. to Hamlin. If not contact. That was really close. Oh, the 11 almost came around. See Larson get those left sides all the way under the white line. Sparks flying off of that splitter. Boy, this has got to be such a big boost for Jamie McMurray and that number one car and that whole team running up front tonight and got the second best car right now. Let's see if there's con if there was contact here. Boy, yeah. just slight, just slight. Regan. Well, the last thing that the one car Jamie Murray needs right now, Mike, is contact. He's down to two sets of sticker tires sitting here right now in his pit stall. The set that's about to go on the car is a scuff set from earlier in the race. It's the set that had a vibration. Crew Chief Matt McCall just came off the pit box. He told me he's very nervous to put that set of tires on, so watch out for that if they have to. Wow, a little bit of tire strategy there. Same uh, at work for Eric Jones and the 20. All getting really close to being out of tires. It's going to be close. Like we'll see. It'll be tough. If it goes the way it is now, we'll basically go into the final stage after pitting and have two sets of lane. Oh, we good. Great. I mean, we may get into a situation where we're, we have to use the seven lap scuffs, but well, all I want to do that if I have to do it, save the sticker to the end. I'm with you. And guys, just to follow up on all this, like Kyle Busch, our leader right now, he still has four sets. And then you talk about, we just mentioned, uh, Eric Jones, who's sitting there with three sets, which would also include Jimmy Johnson, Kurt Busch, Joey Logano, and Denny Hamlin. And then to Regan's point, Jamie McMurray, only two sets. And we know we absolutely have one more caution at the end of stage three, lap 300. Larry, do you think maybe everybody was a little spooked when Brad Kozlowski stayed out with no tires and dropped like a rock? Well, Mike, we saw it even in the Xfinity Series race yesterday that ran this same tire combination. You run about 15 laps. You were well over a second off the pace. You pretty much had to come to pit road. Boy, I tell you what, those Ganassi cars tonight are fast, both of them. How about the 42, man? BW there is sitting pretty when it comes to sticker tires. Four brand new sets still sitting in the pit. Gives Chad Johnson a lot to play with in the playbook strategy wise here to the finish.
Note those tires say support our troops on the sidewalls. You'll see those used in every NASCAR National Series race from now through 4th of July. Four hundred miles down, two hundred to go, and the track has cooled another five degrees. Gets cooler, gets more humid also. Get, I tell you, it's getting hotter on the track. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are racing each other pretty hard right now. What'd you call it? It's getting a little steamy. <laughs> Boy, looked like Jimmy Johnson just got really loose off of turn four. Either that or he just tried to get away from one, uh, the car on the outside of him and try to get, let's see this. Down on the bottom, you can see it's the back low. starting to oh, kick yeah, out. Yeah, he just yeah. got real loose. Just I saw out. him running real low. Casey Kane did a nice job just staying in the gas, getting to the outside of him. Yeah, Casey Kane been running around the top 12, 15 here. He's running 14th right now. Nice night for that 95 team. Ryan Newman right there. Newman's had a pretty good night. Oh, oh Larson! Oh, Larson! Oh. Turn two around, he goes. Hang on to it, brother. I don't think he's going to hit anything. Nope. Little bit of damage to that right rear quarter corner of the bumper. Caution at lap 272. I'll take it. <laughs> it you know, it looked to me, Daryl, like he started trying to run that super high line that we saw McMurray running so well. Yeah. Car, you can't be loose and run up there. He just he just proved it. Larson was fourth when he went for a spin down in turn one. Yeah, there he goes all yeah, the way to see, the top. There he is. Oh, he, look at that oh, left rear. Yeah, Remember how we talked about earlier, I think it was uh, Matt talked about him getting some kind of wheel hop yep. in the rear tire, getting into the corner. Boy, that was really odd. That's what happened. Look, that cockpit is full of smoke, and look at this car control. Driving, 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 still on the gas. Uh, you Break. always know where the wall is. Back in the never, gas. never lose sight of that. He's lost sight of everything. Look how much smoke is in that car. <laughs> and he keeps it off the wall. Spins it around. Here I come. Okay, lock it down there. Lock it down. All at about 160 miles but, but an hour. Mike, did you hear that? Stayed in the throttle. Our Fox Megatrax camera on the back stretch was scared. <laughs> Close. There, there, there's something going on with that left rear tire on that 42 car. Seen that? Saw that at Phoenix earlier this year. Uh, let's listen to Kyle Larson. Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, I, 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 I can't do anything. I mean, rear end just wheel hops like it has all year. So Kyle Larson will stay on the lead lap after this spin at lap 272.
Jimmy Johnson in 11th place. That's why I have for tools, brother. I'm just telling you. You can raise it up a couple of inches, though, right? I know you raised it two inches over the course of that run. That's fine. You don't need it, but I'm doing it for you. All right, listen, I don't want you pissed. So if you need to loosen it up, that's the only thing that we can do at this point. You understand, bud? I do. I'm not sure you understand me. I have worked to my limits inside the car. This is all that I have. Unless we come up with something else, this is all that I can do. That's it. Johnson will restart from 11th. There's Chad Kanaus. Chad saying, I don't know what else to adjust here try on a this. pit stop. Yeah. yeah, try this. Kyle Busch and Jamie McMurray. McMurray, who gave Chip Ganassi his only Daytona 500, all-star and Brickyard win, lines up against the man who's dominated the night. Here we go. Kurt Busch chasing younger brother Kyle now. Keslowski with a huge run three wide. He must have passed six cars on that restart. Well, four, you can get so much. Four no. fresh tires on that too. Yeah, right so much momentum up high and right through the middle he goes between the 90, 80, 80. He's after the 11 now. Uh, two cars going somewhere, He's boys. A, he remembers when they were all passing him with those fresh tires earlier. He's going to make up for it. Oh, a smoker going down into fire. turn one. Fire, big fire going into turn one. Ryan Blaney goes aflame. Stop on the two here, stop on two. Keep coming here, keep coming, keep going on your left. Caution. They told him to run it till it now. blew up. Right That's what he did. Start getting out. Hop out. I don't mind it blowing up, but it didn't have to burn up. Well, that caution will be a break for A.J. Allmendinger. Free There's pass. Ryan Blaney out of the car. Up in a cloud of smoke. Well, Roger Penske got one of his number 12s to victory lane today, but that was at Indy. Tough break for that kid, and he's had a several of them this year so yep. far. Good car, good team. Yeah, he's had some great runs that not been able to pull it off. Jeremy Bowen's smart crew chief. Just can't, just don't have very good luck right now. Mike, this thing started blowing up about the start finish line, and then of course it went down there a little ways, and that's the oil that's just gotten all over everything, caught on fire. That's a lot of oil. Five gallon. As Ken Schrader would say, it was a big hole in one of those expensive parts. Yeah, one of those real important parts just broke. Yep. <laughs> That is not the kind of fireworks Ryan Blaney was hoping no. for tonight. He'll take the uh, mandatory trip to the care center. To be checked out. I tell you, this old race will suck the guts out of every. I mean, they're really hard on the engines with practice, qualifying, trying to run these things 600 miles. They end up with about 750, 800 miles on them at the end of the day if they make it all the way. So we're about 420 miles in. At what point do you know in the car? Did you hydrate enough? Did you prepare <laughs> properly to go the distance? <laughs> you know when? Right now. <laughs> yeah. No, when you don't have to, when you don't have to think of, when you don't think about going to the bathroom anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can tell you when you've realized you didn't hydrate enough, and that's when you come down to do a pit stop and you push the clutch pedal in to pull into your pit stall, and your left calf muscle just cramps up. That's when you know that it's going to be a long hundred miles or however many laps are left. Yeah, that's dehydration. Going to be a good bit of cleanup down in turn number one from Ryan Blaney.
18 laps to go in stage three. And Kyle Larson, the only car to come down pit road of the lead lap cars as pit lane opens. I think Kyle Larson came in and said, y'all need to tighten this thing up. <laughs> 600 miles is NASCAR's longest race, the only race with four stages. All the rest have three. Well, we know it's 400 laps around the mile and a half Charlotte Motor Speedway. I-485 rings the Queen City. I didn't realize it was almost 70 miles around there. And if you want to make nine laps, you'll go 600 miles. Kyle Larson still on pit road, racing to remember Army Captain Kimberly Hampton, lost in Fallujah in 2004, age 27 from Easley, South Carolina. The first female pilot killed in Iraq. She was with the 82nd Airborne. Mike, we saw that car wheel hop going into turn one. Have you ever seen a car wheel hop in a mile and a half racetrack? Not on a mile and a half, but I, 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 one thing we know, and Larry knows this, they play with that left rear spring so much. That, that spring is really weak. It's a 150-pound spring, maybe. You get a little bit of a rebound issue with the shock and a weak shot, a spring like that. That could happen, and that's got to be what's happening to that uh, 42 car. And you could hear in his voice, this is a continuing issue oh, we've with heard, them. Yeah, we've, yeah, heard, we've him talk about, heard him talk about earlier today I think I remember at Kansas he mentioned it never the car never snapped around and, and spun out and we couldn't physically physically see it visually see it like we just did in that replay when he spun out in turn one the US Open is on Fox Tiger Woods is back ready to take on the greatest golfers in the world Something, something tells me Jeff goes for the parties. No, no, it's just going to be a good time. Father's Day weekend. Let's listen in on 11th place, Clint Boyer. You're kind of in the catbird seat here. It's like you're going to probably have 15 or less laps to go. If you pit, you're going to be 22nd, and you're still going to have to pit when the stage ends. So now you pretty much gave up your track position for no reason. Here, if you get a good restart or things go your way, you might get some stage points. But even if you break even, at least you're pitting with the cars you've been racing. That's a lot of logical deduction right there. Which I like. Well, they're in pretty good shape. Right about in the middle of the lead lap, we'll restart with 23 lead lap cars. Ty Dillon got the free pass on the last caution. A.J. Allmendinger on this one. And Mike, unlike a lot of drivers, Michael Bugger, Ravage, Clint Boyer, they're pretty good shape on sets of tires. They still have four laying in their pits. Kyle Busch has led 263 of 284 laps tonight in his Joe Gibbs Toyota. That's his older brother uh, lined up alongside Kurt Busch. And that's Stuart Haas Ford. Jamie McMurray's Chevrolet's had a good run. Last year's Rookie of the Year, Eric Jones in the 20. Eric Almirola, the number 10 Ford. And Denny Hamlin in the number 6 Toyota. Have all run up near the front. No Kevin Harvick. Cut a tire, slammed the wall back at lap 83 out of the race. Yeah, but all in three Stuart Haas cars at left front are all in the top 11. And Kurt Busch up there getting ready to put a little pressure on his brother. Toyota Ford Chevy 1 2 3. Kyle Busch, Kurt Busch, Jamie McMurray. I know we've got 116 to go, but that that carrot that's being dangled out in front of Kyle Busch, not just the 600, but to check off every track on the schedule to have won a points race at. That is huge. You know, that's an accomplishment. He gets, that's what he's going for. It gets such a huge jump just about every restart. You see there, it just shoots right out there, gets a nice, comfortable lead before they ever get to turn one. Martin Truex in the middle three wide. That's 78. What's Eric Jones on the outside? Just went around Kurt Busch. 
That 20 car looks like it's come alive here late in the day. Well, he was really good earlier in the day. Then he kind of fell off, had some issues on pit road, had the damage when he got in the back of the 22 of Logano, but he's back now. You want to see somebody that's a rock between two hard places? That's 78 car right now. A couple of pit road issues for Truex. Two penalties. Well, he's threading the needle oh, right man. there. Still three. He's coming over here. Clear top. Clear top. Here, 22 Steiner. He's out there. Out there. He's still in the damn middle here. Still middle. <laughs> I got Lincoln Hughes. Busy <laughs> right now. <laughs> That's definitely the kind of middle he was in. And remember, Martin Truex had only two returning over the wall crew members from his 2017 championship team. And how about and they've struggled. How about Keselowski, Mike? I'm all the trouble he's had. Here he is running fifth. And this is exactly what he needed to have happen is to get off sequence so that he could make up all that ground that he lost earlier when he was on the older tires. <laughs> Been an up and down day for Team Penske. Vince. Ryan Blaney dropped a cylinder early and the engine finally let go. Big fire from that. What's that feel like inside when we see all those big flames from the outside? Uh, I don't know. It looks worse than what it is for us on the inside. It gets warm and smoky, but uh, yeah, that's stunk. You know, we had a little troubles early. We're just trying to ride it out. And, uh, the car was really good. We were uh, second that first stage. And, I was really looking forward to the second part of that race, and uh, they let go. You know, it got hurt, maybe lap 150, and just uh, that's a bummer, man. And I hate it for everybody. I hate talking to you guys out of the care center, to be honest with you, the past few weeks. And hopefully, we can get a turnaround. But you know, we got fast cars, and hopefully, we can take that on to Pocono, Michigan. Glad you're okay. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks. Blaine is the defending champion of next week's Pocono race. Wow, Jimmy Johnson didn't have a lot of room there. Taking oh, some chances. He squeezed himself between the wall and that 10 car and made it. Give a lot of credit there to Andy DeHunt, the spotter for the nine car of Chase Elliott, Whoa. to tell him that Jimmy was going to be three wide on the outside to get plenty of room. Boy, did you see Chase Elliott off two? Car got a little squirrely. He lost two or three spots there before he could get it gathered up. These cars seem to do that tonight, Jeff. They seem to be good, 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 and all of a sudden they get like spin out or get real loose with you all at once. Well, Unexpected. It, and Larry talked about this as the track temperature continues to go down, and it's under 90 degrees now. This is the coolest it's been since this race started, and it's gone down quite a bit. I think you're going to start to see those front tires grip a little bit better and the, the rears grip less. Now, since this restart, Martin Truex has lost six positions. Jamie. It's been one of those nights for Martin Truex Jr. in the 78. Started 15th, drove his way to second, and as you mentioned, two pit road penalties tonight. Then he rejoined the top 10 in a bad restart, and now he's mad. He's mad at the nine. He said, I should have wrecked Chase Elliott when he tried to block me there. And by the way, his car is now plowing like a dump truck. Oh, oh boy. man. You know it's getting right when it's getting late when they start plowing like a dump truck. You don't hear that every day. Now, I don't I don't know if I've ever heard out that out of Mark Church Jr. Since he's been driving that 78 car. Here yeah. comes Kyle Larson in the 42 back toward the front after spinning in turn two at lap 272. Yeah, and Jeff, you know who's saying it's Cole Purr saying, is that Martin Truex that just said that? <laughs> Casey Kane in seventh. He's had some great runs here in the 600. Regan? Well, you're right, Mike Casey. We forget how good he has been at this racetrack. So far tonight, he was a little loose early on. They over-adjusted, got him too tight. But now he is extremely happy with that race car. This is a, one of the smaller teams out here doing a lot tonight. It's the same setup they used in Dover. He's pleased. Yeah, Travis Max is crew chief. And uh, Jeff and I were talking about Travis. He came from over at Henrik. Smart kid. And uh, they know this track pretty well. Casey Kane does. Nice run tonight. Casey's had three wins in the Coke 600 for three different teams. Well, Joey Logano started on the outside pole, but look at the right side of his number 22, just in front of the right rear wheel because of this. Uh, 
Oh, that's just a little kiss. Just a little kiss. Well, the car's yellow, the wall's yellow. What's the difference? <laughs> Gosh, if I if I had a nickel for every time I scraped that wall for turn four <laughs> or almost hit it. <laughs> Ryan Newman's had a good run in ninth place, Vince. He has had a good run. In fact, he's come from the back uh, once after an early pit lane penalty. But right now he feels like he says he got a right rear or a uh, tire issue. Said it almost feels more like the wheel instead of the tire. So it's a good thing that this stage is coming to the end. He's trying to hang on until they get there. We haven't heard a lot of loose wheels tonight, uh, no. Jeff. I don't know that we've heard of any, actually. Well, I hope hey, that's right. a good call. There's only three laps to go in this stage if he can ride it out. Since the restart, Eric Almarola has dropped from sixth to 15th, Matt. He's been very cons consistent tonight, running in the top five or so. But, Mike, the past two runs, the car has swung to the tight side. The last six or seven laps, it is just plowing. He's trying to hold on. Three to go. Do they get to the break? They can try to fix the 10. Well, Pushing we're, and plowing, Larry. Yeah, we're in complete darkness now, and, and definitely the, the the handling characteristics are changing. But I would expect to hear more drivers complaining about being too free or too loose based on what a lot of crew chiefs told me this morning. Larry, one thing I'm seeing is the pace has picked up. Cars are going much faster. There's not near as much fall off right now as we've seen in the past. And I'm wondering if that's building that right front air pressure up a little bit more. I just think those higher speeds changes everything. Last year, Martin Truex was rolling up the stage wins. Now he's fighting for the last stage point. He got two spots right there at one time. Truex now ninth, leaving Jimmy Johnson and Ryan Newman to fight for 10th. Oh, Jimmy Johnson's really loose right now. We heard that conversation with him and Chad Knauss trying to figure out how to tighten the car up. Kyle Busch wins stage three. This time from teammate Eric Jones. Keselowski third, Kurt Busch, Jamie McMurray in the top five. I call that dominance. First time any driver has won three stages in a race. Of course, we only have three stages in this one.
Three stages in the books, three stage wins for Kyle Busch. This time in front of his young teammate Eric Jones, last year's Rookie of the Year. Keselowski and Bush in Fords, McMurray and a Chevrolet are the top five. The final stage will also be 100 laps, minus these caution laps, as pit road will be open this time for the lead lap cars. 23 of them. Matt Kenseth will get the free pass. Regan? The 20 car of Eric Jones looking for his pit stall. It's the very first one in as he hits his box. He's been a little too tight turning down the hill these past couple runs. Chris Gale thinks that's because of the cycles on tires. He's going to give him four sticker tires and send him back out. Vince? Well, the 48 of Jimmy Johnson, they've kind of lost their way of late. They're going to make a chassis adjustment for tires and air pressure, just trying to snug it up a little bit, Matt. Kozlowski fans hitting the reset button. Brad says the car really free off and really bad over the bumps. He can't arc it like the 18 and 20 can into the corner, Jamie. Domination has been the night for Kyle Busch. The car is good. He says it's building slightly tight, but that's all he had. Four tire stop for 18, and he's out in front. Kyle Busch, Kozlowski, Kurt Busch, Hamlin, McMurray as they come off pit road. We say we check in with Kyle Busch. Hey, Kyle, this is Jeff up in the booth. You got me? Yeah, buddy. How's it going? <laughs> well, other than you staking up the show, <laughs> uh, it's going really good. But, uh, you know, this thing's never over till it's over. How's the track changing? And, and, and what do you see happening or what you need to do to get this thing done tonight? Uh, we've definitely gone through some change here. Uh, our car has been continually to getting to where it's turning better as the night's kind of gone on here. So we've been keeping up with it that way. But other than that, it's, uh, man, feels good to lead all these laps. But shoot, we need to we need to score that checker flag. So um, we still got this last stage to go get it done in. And the um, guys have been doing amazing. They gave me a great piece tonight. The Seminem's Camry fast. So anywhere we put it, we're, uh, we're pretty quick, so we just got to keep keep it going. Yeah, no, you're looking good. And in case you're curious, there's some amazing racing happening back there, like <laughs> fifth, tenth on back. <laughs> good luck. Kyle Busch has swept all three stages so far.
Wow. Three hundred five laps complete, ready for stage four. You'll see Eric Jones down there in 19th place on the rundown. He entered pit road in second place, but came out 19th. He had a pit stop nine seconds longer than Kyle Busch. Why, Larry? Yeah, he, he, we talked about it earlier. He is pitting in that first pit box, and Casey Kane in the 95 is pitting right in front of him. Now, you're going to see Houston Stamper, the right front tire changer. He's going to take the lugs loose. And look at there, when Casey Kane in that 95 came in, it just ripped the air gun and air hose completely out of his hands. That's why the stop was so slow. came in the box and yanked the freaking gun and hose all out of his hand and he had to go to the backup gun. I don't know. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Jones peels out, racing to remember Corporal Nicholas Roush of the United States Army, lost in Afghanistan in 2009. The Middleville, Michigan young man was 22 years old, left behind his parents and two brothers. Remember, we've seen some weird things in the pits, haven't we? And that's one of them. The car in front of you jerks the pit gun right out of your hand. It'll be 93 laps to go when we go back to green. Field formed up behind the pace car. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn, making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR, inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. Coming up on the chicane there that'll be used for the Roval race in the playoffs in October. The road course and oval combined, and we're back under green. Stage four. Jimmy Johnson picked up a couple on the high side coming off turn two. There's his number 48. Yeah, yeah uh, Mike, I think the deal with the 48 is pretty good on new tires. But after the new comes off the tire, it seems like the car starts to get loose and he can't handle it. Yeah, Darrell, you, usually on, on new tires and those pressures are down, you want a car that's turning nice and strong. Brian Newman right in the middle of it. Vince? Well, I remember right before the end of that stage break there, we told you that uh, Newman thought he had a tire or wheel issue. They just told him that the tires looked fine, so they uh, feel like they've maybe dodged the bullet there, but they're not exactly sure what the issue might be since the tires look fine. But one thing they have done is they've swapped pit crews with the three of Austin Dillon. Dillon about 50 laps off the pace because of an early incident. The 31 pit crew wasn't having a good night, so they swapped crews, and that crew picked up Ryan Newman a few spots on that last stop. Thanks, Vince. Newman, top five. And Mike, Wait. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, these cars are handling the best I think I've ever seen cars handle over here. Uh, last week in the All-Star Race, I saw them do things with these cars I'd never seen before. Tonight, two and three and sometimes four wide, everybody's hanging on, and the car looks like they're really sticking good enough that the guys can handle it without any problem. Second place. Or third place, rather, Denny Hamlin inside of Kurt Busch. Keselowski second. Kyle Busch, your leader. I was curious to watch what Keselowski was going to do now that he has that track position. I think between the adjustments that they've made, the track conditions, uh, his car is far better than it was at the beginning of this race. We'll have to wait and see if it holds on. Whoa, whoa, Jimmy Johnson way up the hill. Yeah, that, that, that's what we see with him, Mike. Puts four tires on him, hang on to it for a lap or two, then it goes, well, then it goes crazy. And here's Newman. Has he got a tire down? Uh-oh. Straight to the garage, and we'll change the hub. Vince. Well, you hear uh, the crew chief of the 31. That's with Ryan Newman's team, Luke Lambert. We told you about the uh, tire issue. Ends up being a left front. They think it's a uh, wheel bearing, so they're going to take it straight to the garage. That is a bad break for a team that's had about a month full of them here over the last four or five weeks. They obviously saw something on that last pit stop that gave them enough indication that it's more than just a loose wheel. 
Kyle Busch 1.6 up on Keselowski. Then Hamlin, Kurt Busch, here's Suarez working Eric Almarola and Clint Boyer. Ricky Stenhouse had to restart 24. They had an uncontrolled tire on their last pit stop. 87 to go. Race fans, instead of going to commercial, we're going to go to an unlimited break brought to you by Coca Cola. Tough night for Richard Childress racing all around with uh, Ryan Newman just going to the garage and the early problem back at lap 37 for Austin Dillon the defending champ of this race that you're riding with. Yeah I would I thought the children's cars were really going to have a good weekend over they qualified well and they looked good in practice Dillon did. Newman did but uh, just hadn't gone their way tonight and you could say the same thing about this team right here and Penske and Joey Logano qualified second for this race really expected him to be up front battling for the lead throughout the whole night. Kyle Larson had a lot of laps up front too. And then <laughs> ran into trouble spinning at lap 272. I don't think you're going to see him go to the top and turn one anytime <laughs> no, soon. That's no. when that left rear tire started wheel hopping. Bubba, Bubba Wallace. Haven't talked a lot about Bubba no, but tonight, but he's doing a really solid job. Yeah, he was all the way up in the top 12 there at one time. Right now he's running uh, 18th, but still a nice night for the 43 car. Daniel Suarez in 16 had uh, one, maybe two off cycle green flag pit stops. Yeah, I really was thinking that Suarez is going to have a nice night. He's had some good runs the last few weeks, really qualified good. I thought he might be a factor tonight, but boy, they've had their share of trouble. Runner up in the All Star race. I'm impressed that Suarez is in 16 with all the issues they've had on pit road, yeah. or, you know, needing to come down pit road. A.J. Allmendinger, who got the free pass, a caution, a go, going inside of Logano there. So with 82 laps to go, let's see how the Coca-Cola family of drivers are faring tonight. Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson, top 10. Suarez, Wallace, top 20. Logano, 21st. Newman and Dillon with difficulties tonight. And I just love that visor cam shot that we were just showing from inside of Denny Hamlin's car. You could see how rough this racetrack is with the setup that these teams have in these cars to maximize the downforce and put these cars right down on the racetrack. It is such a rough ride. Yeah, I, I, I had one driver tell me it was violent that it shook you in the car so bad that it was really violent. You see going down the back straightway right here. It's it real rough turn. right there. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, that's just that's j Jocelyn, the driver all over the place. Great if battle you, if, for third here. Three and a half seconds back of the lead. Excellent battle for third side by side. Jamie. Well, just before that stage break, you guys remember you even chuckled. He was so mad. Martin Truex Jr. said he should have wrecked the nine. He wasn't happy with the car. He was running 10th. Well, they came in and changed tires, and he told him he didn't like the stagger in that last set of tires. So they put some new ones on, made a wedge adjustment, and he said, baby, I'm coming after him, and he's already up to third. Tell you what, Quite with a Martin Truex and Cole Pern, when they get that car right, if I was Kyle Busch, I'd be a little bit worried about that. Well, and I'm going to be looking at my other sets of tires that I have left and try to figure out if there's anything I can do to find that match pair uh, set of tires for that last run that's going to have the same stagger as these tires. Kyle Busch has now led 300 laps. That's 450 miles tonight. That was like Nanu Nanu. I thought the. I, I can remember years ago 
We, we used to think that somebody would get our uh, on to our radio channel and just start keying up a mic or doing something just to try to distract us when we were having a good day. Nah. That was strange. Nah, that was Lily Tomlin. She was just trying <laughs> to break in party line. But now the technology is there with digital radios. But if the teams use digital radios in the race, the fans could not scan and listen into the teams and drivers. And that's a very important aspect of uh, the fan experience in NASCAR racing. You know, Mike, the best opportunity to do something when uh, the, you say you can't is when you figure out a way to do it. <laughs> Always loved when they said, oh, you can't do that. Let me try to figure out a way. I think it's so cool that the fans here at the track, and I think they even broadcast it uh, where you can do it online and listen in to these teams. Look at that. That two cars is running really, really strong right now. But I tell you, the guy chasing him down is right back there in the picture coming in the frame. That 78 is pretty fast. But what about the two, Matt? Well, right now he's holding station in that second spot. Paul Wolf telling him, just run, do what the car will give you. Now his spotter for this event and yesterday when he won the Xfinity race, Jefferson Hodges spent a lot of time at Brad Keselowski racing with the truck series and would fill in from time to time, doing a great job tonight, just giving him information of what lane the others are running. Thanks, Matt. Keselowski's a factor tonight. Well, it's NASCAR's longest night. How about a double dose of Fox NASCAR? Crank it up. Do it. I like it. Truex Jr. rolls into second place, three and a half seconds behind the leader, and he's coming. That was a power move right yeah. there. He got a run off of turn two, got to the rear bumper of Brad Keselowski. Brad tried to go to the middle lane, opened up that bottom group for Truex, and he just dove in there and jumped in the gas and drove right by him. Mike, this may come as a great surprise to you and all of our friends at home, but that 78 is the fastest car on the track right now. And he's chasing down that 18 little at a time. You saw that black 15 of Ross Chastain right behind the leader did a great job of staying on the lead lap did get one free pass but stayed on the lead lap until just now Chastain going one lap down. Nice drive.
Welcome back to the Coca-Cola 600. 63 laps to go. Kyle Busch remains out front. Martin Truex Jr. trying to run him down, but not gaining much ground. Those Toyotas lead Brad Keselowski's Ford. Denny Hamlin's Gibbs Toyota and Kurt Busch in a Ford. The first Chevrolet is Jimmy Johnson in sixth. 23 cars on the lead lap with 63 to go. Seems like that 18 is just minding that gap, keeping that gap the same all the time. You know, my one to watch was the 78 Martin Truex Jr. I still got faith in him. I mean, he has shown that he can overcome a lot. But boy, I don't know, that 18, <laughs> when, when he needs to, he seems to be able to run those fast laps. What about you, Larry? Well, I talked about Johnny Klosmeyer, the crew chief for Eric Almirola in that 10 car, set up there and ran in the top five all night long. And it just appears they maybe they haven't kept up with the racetrack and those changes. And I think the same thing possibly with his teammate Clint Boyer and, and Michael Bugarevich in that 14 right there behind him. Well, Larry, Jeff, I, I, I mean, really, I, I, I don't really need my binoculars to see who's behind me, but I just barely can see that 78 back there. <laughs> Guys, I'm a little less certain about my 11 car of Denny <laughs> Hamlin right now. The lap times just aren't there. He can match what Truex and Kozlowski run every now and then, but I'm really thankful Denny's given us this ride. That visor cam gives the fans at home the sensation of what it's like to drive around this racetrack. I love that view. Denny's got a fast car, but uh, Kyle Busch is going to have to make a mistake or this is going to be over soon. Well, I had Kyle Larson, who's currently in eighth place, and unless we get a caution, gets late early around here, doesn't it? Joey Logano on pit road with 60 to go. And we listened in on Martin Truex and company. When he runs the middle half, I bet first team is he. Well, he was about a foot and a half, two foot. Yes, I was saying he's like two feet above the flag. I think Mark Church Jr. felt like when he was running the bottom, he was he he was matching him or, or co closing in on him. As soon as Kyle Busch moved up to that middle groove, all of a sudden he started pulling away. All right, you saw Joy Logano just pitch. You see Casey Kane in that 95. What they're doing, they are very heavy duty short pitting. The window has opened. Now, what I thought, we went back racing with about 93 laps to go. That means you can run on fuel till about 35 to 40 to go right there. I felt like the leaders will split this stage in half and somewhere around 45 to 50 to go is when you're going to see most of them hit pit road. But a lot of them are short pitting, trying to take advantage of those fresh tires now. Boy, Jimmy Johnson going at him with Denny Hamlin here. I've for never fourth seen place. Jimmy Johnson three wide as many times as I've seen him three wide tonight. But you know what I love about Jimmy Johnson? He and Chad, they were having that conversation about the car was doing this, car was doing that. They didn't panic. They just worked on it and got it where it's pretty darn good right now, Vince. <laughs> well, what makes it amazing is that Jimmy just came over the radio and told Chad, he said, I have no grip this run. I'm down 4.1 on the track bar. That is a lot for one run. It doesn't look like it does it up there riding the rim. It really doesn't, and it doesn't matter. You're better than everybody else. That's all that matters. He just had three handfuls of steering wheel in one corner. Uh, that's what I've always said makes Jimmy Johnson one of the best is just how loose he's willing to drive a car and do it lap after lap. Yeah, I've said that's the hardest car to drive, I think, every, through the years. It's always right on the edge, always loose. That's what made it so fast. Here are three Fords fighting for 12th place. Bernard, Almirola, and Boyer. 56 laps to go. The pit window is open, so we're going to take you Fox NASCAR side by side.
<laughs> well, as you saw during our side by side coverage, all but six of the lead lap cars have pitted, and they are the top six on the board Kyle Busch, Martin Truex, Denny Hamlin, Eric Jones. Michael McDowell and Ty Dillon. Everyone else has been to Pitt Road. Boy, they were giving Kyle Busch those cars with fresh tires. They were giving him a fifth there for a few laps. He kind of backed off a little bit and said, y'all go ahead. And now there were five. Now that Ty Dillon has come in. Yeah, I think that's the only thing Kyle Busch has had to be nervous about all night is others trying to get back on the lead lap. So, Larry, what do you think between Kyle Busch and Martin Truex on strategy? Yeah, I mean, Kyle Busch, he's got an eight-second lead, Mike. He can wait them out here. You know, he doesn't have to commit. He can let them come, and he still has a few laps in the bank that he can wait. Larry, Larry he was trying to get the pit road that time by, and he was going too fast. Didn't make it. Or, or he was worried about those cars on fresher tires carrying so much speed that he didn't want to stop that time. No, he was trying to get on pit road, and he was going too fast, and he just about wrecked that thing. These are the kind of things, Mike, that happen to you at the end of these 600-mile races. You're tired. You've been out there driving hard. Start to make those mental mistakes. Yeah, if that 18 comes, that's 78 in my mind. He, he can't sit out there and run on his old tires. He's coming right along with him, Larry. And Kyle Busch is in. Truex is in with him. We'll see if Hamlin and Jones follow. Hamlin. Stays on the racetrack, picks up the lead for the fourth time tonight. Jamie. The last run, the 78 seemed to be better on the short run. He said it's so rough and bouncy. I just can't make up speed on the 18. Meanwhile, the 18, like you guys said, his biggest challenge tonight was right there with the lap traffic. He said, I'm getting my butt kicked out here. They stayed a couple more laps, another four tire stop. They've made minimal changes to this car. Regan? Denny Hamlin hits pit road. They remind him 3,800 RPMs as he comes down pit road, so he doesn't speed. He's been lacking grip these last couple runs. He's been working inside the race car with the levers. They're going to give him an air pressure adjustment to try and give him more grip to catch the guys out front. So these drivers plus Michael McDowell have all pitted. Everyone has now made what could, what would be their final stop if we go green for the final 47 laps. Kyle Busch has just been amazing on pit road. That team has not lost one position in the pits this whole race. Where, where has he not been amazing, Mike? <laughs> They've been yeah. amazing everywhere, from qualifying all the way through. I tell you what, when he tried to get on pit road, he just about made a mistake, but he recovered. His crew was two seconds quicker than Truex that time. Well, Truex's team has been having trouble in the pit quite a, quite a bit, so that, that's not a huge surprise. One's flawless, the other is kind of hit and miss. And it is Joe Gibbs Racing that supplies the pit crews for both of those teams. Brad Kozlowski now 3.4 seconds back now that everybody's made their stops. He gained quite a bit on Kyle Busch by making his pit stop six laps earlier than the race leader. Mike Regan Smith did report on Jamie McMurray that one car. They hope, he and Matt McCall hopes this thing goes to the end green. They have put their last set of Goodyear sticker tires on that one car when they just pitted, sitting there running fourth right now. And Eric Jones, Man. night gets worse. The tire changer had an air gun ripped out of his hand by another car coming by, and this time they had an uncontrolled tire. Just a not, tough break. Just not their night. So he has a drive-through penalty at pit road speed. Team has just had things like this happen to them almost every week. Yep. Had a great run going to then. Yeah, on track. Everything that Eric Jones has done on track with that car this weekend, I think I've been very impressed with. And I think they've stepped up in that sense. Now they've got to put all the other pieces together. And the same for Martin Truex. He's been uh, great on track. They've had pit stop difficulty, not just tonight, but a good bit of this season. He's passing Kurt Busch for sixth place now. Yeah, a lot of these cars that he's going to come up on, he shouldn't have too much trouble with them. They 
short pitted him and, and our leader Kyle Bush. So he should have a little bit fresher tires and be able to get by them once he catches them. There he goes by Larson. Kyle Larson's done a nice job though after that spin coming off the wall and uh, he's been able to keep the car straight he's running six. Kept it from wheel hopping since yeah. then. Been a pretty nice recovery for that team. Going by Landon Castle in the double zero. Back in 27th spot. Battling Jeffrey Earnhardt, who is in 30th position in the 55. Double zero, Castle running 27th. By the way, uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr., who retired at the end of last season, he's here tonight working with uh, his new colleagues on a project that begins in July. Mike, we just, you see that left rear yeah. tire, you just see that thing shaking. Got wheel hopping and he lost it. And listen, he is driving that thing. Look at that rear tire smoking. He's in the gas. Comes down off the track. It's going to use a little brake. Locks it down, turns it around, back in the gas, off the wall. With a cockpit full of smoke, so you can't see. Incredible <laughs> car control. And now he's running six. That I was, mean, that that's happened pretty about, nice recovery. That was about 90 laps ago. Matt? Mike, two stops ago, a shock adjustment has helped that bounciness, but it is still bouncing the car, still on the free side, but he is making the most of it, currently P6. All right, guys, Jamie McMurray is going to love some Larry McNuggets when it comes to the trends of the race because <laughs> I looked at the last 10 Coca-Cola 600s, the average of the last caution flag, lap 356, 44 laps to go. Now, three times in the final 20 laps, Chris Myers mentioned it a long time ago in the pre-race, only one overtime, and that was in 2011. Now, Larry, if he did, let's say a caution did come out, what do they have? I, it's not that they don't have any tires, they just don't have any good fresh tires. Yeah, they've got some tires from earlier in the race that I'm sure they have glued back up. You have to have something to put on. Now, it's not going to be like sticker tires, but it would probably be better than tires that have a number of laps on them that's hot. I think uh, the shortest green flag run we had tonight was about 12 laps at the end of one of the stages. So some teams may have uh, tires with as few as 12 laps on them to be able to mount up. Boy, Mike, that 78 car, he, he is hauling the mail right now. He's about three tenths quicker than our leader. He's going by Jimmy Johnson here, and I think he's getting ready to go back Keselowski. Uh, that 78 is, he's trying. I'll give him credit for that. Well, you look at our top five and the night they've had. In fifth is McMurray, who had a loose wheel. In fourth is Jimmy Johnson, who spun. In third is Martin Truex, one speeding ticket, one uncontrolled tire. In second, there's Brad Kozlowski, who missed his pit and didn't make a stop when everybody came in. He couldn't get into his pit. And then Kyle Busch, who's been flawless, but has never won the 600. All those guys with all those problems, you know what they're saying? Thank the Lord for 400 laps. Ride with Joey Logano. That's Matt Kenseth alongside. And here comes the leader. Matt's 18th. That's not a great night. One lap down, but not a bad effort. Logano fighting to stay on the lead lap here. As with just 33 laps to go, we'll take you Fox NASCAR side by side.
Okay. Bush has been the story of the Coca-Cola 600 inside 45 miles remaining in this 600 mile marathon. Michael Waltrip, Chris Myers, nice to have you watching from Charlotte Motor Speedway. 28 laps to go and as dominant as Kyle Busch, a past champion, has been. He's won on every other track, even at Charlotte success, except not in a cup car in a points race. That's what he's trying to do. This is his 15th Coca-Cola 600 and the best finish he's had that was last year when he wound up second. You see how dominant he's been everywhere else. And he's already led. This is the fifth time in his career he surpassed the 300 laps led or more in a race. He's won two of those. Uh, ironically, the guy right behind him, Martin Truex Jr., is the guy who owns the most laps led in this race. Yeah, but Kyle Busch has tried 14 times to win this race, and it hasn't happened for him yet. I know that's on his mind right now. 550 miles into this thing, he sees and hears that Martin Truex has a fast car as well right behind him. A late caution, things can get mixed up. So he's just hoping people keep him straight for the last run here. We've only had four leaders throughout this race. Brad Kozlowski, one of them, has had to work his way back up. He's trying to make history for the Roger Penske going into the Hall of Fame. The Penske team, they won the Indy 500. Never before has the same race team won the Indy 500 and the Coke 600 in the same year. And then look at Jimmy Johnson. This has been an amazing run. He went for a wild slide through turns three and four, got that car on pit road, adjusted it. He hasn't been happy with it, Chris, all day long almost arguing back and forth with crew chief Chad Canal saying this thing won't drive well but he is putting it right out next to the wall. I'm seeing more aggressive driving tonight out of Jimmy Johnson than I have all year. And Jamie McMurray who's won big races. He's won the Daytona 500. He's won an all star race. He hasn't won the Coca Cola 600 and making the pass trying to get ahead of Jimmy Johnson for fourth. I'll tell you about Jamie McMurray. He's one of those extreme athlete guys. See how close that was that car cut to pit road. He's one of those extreme Extreme athlete guys, Chris. He bikes, he runs, he does marathons, he does triathlons, and that's why he's been able to be so mentally tough and run right out next to that wall for 550 miles and not make a mistake. And let's take a look at really how close that was. Well, he'd been down on the bottom already. Look at him working the wheel in there. That slower car to pit road, he just barely was able to get between he and Jimmy Johnson. That would have mixed things up in a hurry. On Kyle Larson, you saw his son. Oh, and on with cash on the pre-race show saying my dad's faster than your dad. Well, uh, Kyle Larson had overcome an earlier spin uh, over his career. He's finished second to, to Kyle Busch seven times, including Bristol back in April. He's got to work his way up if he wants to even play to second in Kyle Busch. Yeah, and it's just uh, the second half race since that spin. I think he had to back it down a couple of notches in order to make sure he made it to the checkered. Denny Hamlin, that car continues to be strong. He's worked around Jimmy Johnson, put Hamlin up into the fourth position. These drivers are all hoping for what Kyle Busch isn't. <laughs> Give me a late caution, please. Said prior to the race, Michael, that the Toyotas had the speed for this race and the longevity to last. And just a quick recap, Austin Dillon won last year. Stage one had a tire problem, went down and out of contention. Of course, Kevin Harvick, who came in as the favorite in this race, had a tire problem and done for the night in stage one. So it's up to these drivers with the time remaining just 21 laps to go. And That's those... I was going to tell you, those Toyotas are impressive, and this one in particular, he's got more speed than Kyle right now. Does he have any way to get up to his bumper? Can Kyle Busch do something that he has never done before and now have a win on every track? We'll watch to the finish. Let's head back upstairs. Darrell Waltrip, Jeff Gordon, and Mike Jordan. Thanks, Chris. 21 laps to go. Kyle Busch's lead, 5.7 seconds. Martin Truex was making some inroads into that number, and now it begins to grow once again. You know, Mike, uh, uh, Michael said down there he felt like he saw a real aggressive Jimmy Johnson tonight. I think it's because the, the car was better tonight. He had a car he could depend on. He had a car he could lean on a little bit, and I think it's really helped Jimmy and his confidence to be as aggressive tonight as he has. Yeah, I think that's going to – this is going to – if he can finish in this position, this is going to be like a win for Jimmy Johnson, that 48 team because they've been a long way from being in the top five at some of their best tracks. But tonight, they've been pretty solid at times. Yeah, and, and, and they have run well enough to be there. It didn't like they lucked into it. They've been running that good all night long. 
Denny Hamlin looking for the Toyota sweep tonight as he works under Brad Keselowski. Well, and I, I'll say this too: the big win I think is going to come for those Toyotas. We've seen Kyle Busch be really strong this season and win, uh, you know, races. We've seen where the 78 Truex he won at Fontana at the Auto Club Speedway, but to have all three of them up front and be as as dominant as they've been tonight. That's a first that we haven't really seen this year because Kevin Harvick's been doing all that. Yeah, and, and I agree with you. The Toyotas are strong first and second and third with Keselowski and a Ford fourth. But then you've got the Chevy of Johnson, McMurray, and Larson. Those are three Chevrolets in the top 10. 88 Bowman is ninth. We haven't seen that good a performance out of the Chevys for a while. So I think they're getting those cars better, better every week. Kyle Busch has been a polarizing figure ever since he came to NASCAR's premier series drove for Rick Hendrick for several years and that was oil and water it just he just didn't work out at Hendrick Motorsports came over here to Joe Gibbs found a home I think Joe Gibbs nurtured him turned him into the winning race car driver he is today and marriage and fatherhood have helped he's got a wife and a young son Brexton he's definitely one of the superstars of our sport Brexton was with Kyle during introductions here is tonight's five hour energy big move of the race you have to credit his pit crew they have been perfect all night. They have not given up a spot from pit entry to pit exit, and his restarts have been fantastic. Kyle Busch and his team at Joe Gibbs Racing have put it all together tonight under the leadership of Adam Stevens. No question, Mike. They got it done tonight. But I tell you, I give Coach Gibbs a lot of a credit for harnessing that energy that Kyle Busch has. Great coach. He knows how to deal with kids like that. Guys, remember what I said in my eBay pit report? You have to be at your best near the end. Their worst stop of the night was stop number one at lap 38. It was a 15-2-3. Everything else, the other eight stops, they've been in either the 14s or the 13s. That last trip to pit road, Four tires, 13.81. And that's flawless. He's had a lot of nicknames over the year. We uh, hung Wild Thing on him for a while, and at the time he was deserving of that. He tended to prefer Rowdy, and I'm not sure if that was a nod to Rowdy Burns of Days of Thunder, <laughs> uh, but Rowdy Bush fit him well as he worked his way up through victories in the Truck Series, in the Xfinity Series, and here in NASCAR's Premier Series. I think with 13 laps to go Mike I think Kyle Busch now is just being defensive. He don't want to get himself in any trouble. You know we talk about these races are never over till Whoa. they're over. Paul Menard had a big moment off of turn four. And Kyle working his way by Menard in the Wood Brothers 21. Ooh, nobody that 21 and Paul Menard's <laughs> yeah. hanging on. Nobody gives up easily. I don't care if it was only two laps to go. Oh, you don't want to go down another lap. Menard's in 13th place. He was on the lead lap and trying to stay there until just now. And Kyle puts 12th place Clint Boyer in his sights. You know, Mike, real quick, I want to step back to what you said. There's never been any doubt of Kyle Bush's talent. That has always been very evident. But, you know, his personality sometimes gets the best of him because he wants it so bad. His passion for winning is pa and, and, and not wanting to lose sometimes rubs people, rubs sponsors, rubs car owners, other team members the wrong way. But you know what? He, he has a way of still pulling those people together and getting phenomenal results. If you want to win races, you want to go have a driver that can help you win championships, Kyle Busch the guy that can help you do that. Well, he's not the first driver of whom fans would say either I want him to win or ever, people saying I want anybody but him to win. You know what that's like. It's, been to, it's, it's run <laughs> through the sport for years. Yes, it has. Ten laps to go. The stories of the season have been Kyle Busch or Samantha. 
and Kevin Harvick. But Harvick's night was a short one this evening. On lap 83, he cut a left front tire and went into the turn three wall, ending his evening. Of course, he's locked into the playoffs. But Mike, before I forget, I want to wish Van Conley a happy birthday today. Today was his birthday. We all work with Van. We all know Van. Good buddy, good friend of all of ours, Larry, Jeff, all of us. Happy birthday, buddy. Yeah, happy birthday, Van. This kind of reminds me of Auto Club when Mark Trix Jr. won that race. Kevin Harvick had an issue that day. He got a, caught up in a wreck with the 42 of Kyle Larson. And that 78 went on and dominated that race. And we all said, what if? Yes. What would this race have looked like? I still think that Trucks had a great shot at winning, just like I think the 18 would have had a great shot at winning this race. But boy, I would love to see them go head to head with the two best right now out there, which I think is Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch. Well, it's almost too late to remind you that last year's winner led only the last two laps. I'm not saying Austin this Dillon. is over. No, I know. <laughs> but Des, you talk about performance. I keep thinking back to two years ago with the Martin Trex here when he led 392 laps. That's the kind of performance I've seen out of this 18 car tonight. Absolutely in a league of his own all night long. I don't care if the sun's out. I don't care how much traction control, traction grip they put traction on the track. Control. Yeah, that's another. <laughs> that's for another time. The traction grip, all those things didn't bother him one bit. Ricky Stenhouse is the 10th place car that and he has just been going put one lap down. Well a lot of these cars that he's passing right now they came in quite a bit earlier than Kyle Busch did and they are hanging on their tires are incredibly old and slide they've lost all the grip they're sliding all over the place so every time Kyle Busch comes up to them and they don't want to go lap down they got their hands full and they're completely sideways right in front of our leader. Well look the only car within 13 seconds of Kyle Busch is Martin Truex. Well the, and, and right now five to go. This is the most nervous five laps of the night. I don't care what position you were in or where you were running these next four or five laps. You just want to get to the end. No cautions. Let me win this thing flat out. And believe it or not, because of how cautious he's had to be around these lap cars and slower cars, Mark Trex Jr. has closed that gap a lot. I mean, he, it's only three and a half seconds right now. I know that's a lot with four laps to go, but yep. it was six, six seconds, about 15, 10, 15 laps ago. If Kyle Busch can close this out, he will be the first driver in the 60 some year history of NASCAR who has made more than one start and one on every track on which he has competed. That's just a, it's a phenomenal that's a phenomenal accomplishment. I don't care if you like Kyle or don't like Kyle. I tell you that is a phenomenal accomplishment. I think that really that's that says it all about his abilities. And he's not shy to tell you that he's pretty good behind the wheel. We heard that the <laughs> you other mean his night. Talent? <laughs> we heard that the other night after the truck race. But I think there's arrogance and then there's there's cocky and then there's competence and I just think he's that confident and you hear it in both he and Kevin Harvick. Uh, they have both praised their team on the radio on the in car radio. They both fired crewmen on the in car radio during a race. You just want them to be as the, the, you want them to put as much into it as you do. They want you want them to be as good as you are. And, and when they're not it, it, it is upsetting. It is disappointing. So you fire them up. Truex second, Hamlin third, Keslowski now fourth, and he may fall into the clutches of Jimmy Johnson, who is the first Chevrolet in the race. White flag. Coming around to lead his 377th <laughs> lap of the race. <laughs> to take home his 47th career win. The Candyman comes. Kyle Busch gets it done at Charlotte. He is now one everywhere. Yes. You guys are amazing. Awesome job. I can't thank y'all enough. Ever since I was a kid, I dreamt of this, man. 
You earned it today, pal. We had uh, Sergeant Tosh on our side there. Thanks for that. Great work, guys. Racing to remember and racing to win. <laughs> Adam Stevens congratulates his crew. Martin Truex, four seconds back, second. Everybody else in another zip code. Nine cars finished on the lead lap. There's Coach Gibbs celebrating with his team. There'll be a prayer and then a celebration. Every man on his crew becomes part of that receiving line. That's his respect right there. Yeah, they, they appreciate that talent behind the wheel. He respects them. They respect they, they the respect get, gets respect, and that's what that was all about. We saw a dominant performance this morning from Monaco. Guy starts on the pole, leads every lap. Captain uh, Roger Penske gets his 17th Indy 500 win, and tonight Kyle Busch checks that last box, won at every race. Kyle Busch taking home the checkered flag. Tonight's Sunoco fueling victory. Fourth win of the year. Last victory was at Richmond. Three starts ago. 15th on the all time win list. And his 12th win on a mile and a half. Boy, he and Kevin Harvick are going to have quite a battle the rest of this season for supremacy victory lane and much more to come from Charlotte after this.
A history-making moment for Kyle Busch. He can't believe it. He's won on every track and finally a cup race, a points race at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And remembering on this Memorial Day weekend, Army Sergeant Eric Toth, who passed away in 2005 in Iraq, as we all pause for race and remembrance this weekend, Kyle celebrates in style. Our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, superior performing tires to face challenging conditions on the track. He led 566 out of the 600 miles, and Jamie Little was there for the celebration. Kyle Busch grew up in Las Vegas, dreaming of being a NASCAR driver, dreaming of living here in Charlotte, racing here, and winning here. The winning part took quite a while, but Kyle, this is the one track that was left on the bucket list, and you checked it off tonight. How special is winning this one for you? This one's very special. Uh, I don't think there's anything that can top Homestead, just with the meaning of what the championship is, but um, the Coke 600, I've dreamt of this race since I was a kid, and, and being able to win this race, and always watching the, uh, the all-star race, and then the 600 the following weekend, and being able to come out here and, uh, and now win uh, the Coca-Cola 600 is just uh, phenomenal. It's a little boy's dreams come true. And uh, man, I just want to say that uh, I thank NASCAR for one, for giving me a chance to come out here and have this opportunity to race for my dreams and um, to, to accomplish those things. And I don't know if it's ever been done before, but the first one to check off all the tracks and, uh, and get it all done. I don't want to go to any new ones. So um, that would just have to start the whole process over, but holy moly. Uh, I can't say enough about M&Ms. Um, love the red, white, and blue scheme and what it means. All of our heroes, whether they're fighting for us right now or whether they're fallen heroes, certainly want to give a remembrance to uh, Eric Toth, who's with us and who was riding on our car tonight, and his family who were with us here this weekend. So that's very, very special. Appreciate NASCAR, NASCAR doing that with uh, NASCAR Salute the Troops. And of course, can't say enough about um, M&Ms, red, white, and blue, interstate batteries. This Toyota Camry was awesome tonight. Adam Stevens and all my guys are just uh, phenomenal to work with, and uh, it's so much fun right now. And this NOS Energy drink is going to keep us rolling for a long time tonight, that's for sure. Uh, I also want to thank Cessna and Ream and um, DVX Eyewear. Of course, the fans, the fans for coming out here and supporting us all through all this. And uh, man, Black Clover, DVX sunglasses. I, I don't know who else I'm forgetting. I'm sorry, but this is, uh, man, this is so huge. Come here, buddy. Daddy. Yeah. Daddy. We won. We won. Uh. Well, Kyle Busch had a dominating performance for sure. It was just a couple of years ago that Martin Truex was on that end of the celebration. Instead, he's leaning up the car. Are you as whipped as you've been in a race in a long time? That was uh, that was a hard one tonight, wasn't it? Yeah, it was tough for sure. I mean, uh, I've, actually, I've been in more shape before, but uh, yes, yeah, uh, you know, for us, it was just a battle. You know, I think uh, felt like we had the second best car early on, and we finally got some track position. You know, we didn't qualify that well. And we got up there behind Kyle, and I thought we were pretty, pretty somewhat close. But on the long runs, man, he was just really stout. And those last 20, 30 laps of run, he could really check out. And so I, I had some trouble with that all night. But um, to have two pit road penalties to come back from that, uh, just proud of the team. The guys on pit road, uh, Cole and, and Jazzy, all the guys in the box, um, they called a good race, and we just had to battle. It was, you know, it's tough to pass right now with these cars, and uh, you know, with the flat splitters and the things we've done the last three or four weeks, rules wise. But um, it, it took us a while to get back to the front, but we still got back to where I thought we should have. And, um, you know, that last run made quite a, quite a bit of ground on Kyle, but I feel like he was probably just taking care of it, managing that lead. So overall, it was a good night. And, uh, you know, definitely uh, got to clean some things up here and there and, and find just a little bit more speed, but we're getting close. Heck of a run. You'll get yours. Martin Truex Jr., runner-up for the second straight race. Fifth time uh, those guys won two with Kyle Busch. Having three wins and three-year-old Brexit showing you're never too young to celebrate in victory lane.
Live here at Charlotte Motor Speedway and the victory sticker that's four wins, the euphoria, the happiness, the, the, the raw excitement after getting to victory lane on NASCAR and auto racing's biggest day. It started in Monaco, Australian Daniel Ricciardo from the pole went on to win and then at the Indy 500 in a Penske car with four laps to go. Will Power, one of the great names in all of sports, had enough power to win. And then, of course, the Coca-Cola 600 from wire to wire. The pole sitter, a dominating performance from Kyle Busch, winning all four stages, drove for the cycle, came in as the points leader, and we're halfway to NASCAR's playoff with Michael Waltrip. Chris Myers looking at the standings, and you see with Kevin Harvick going out of the race early, those playoff points, Kyle Busch jumps in front there as well. Yeah, Harvick and Kyle Busch and Martin Truex have proven to be the guys are going to have to beat for this championship. No different tonight. And nine pit stops, and his pit crew was absolute money. You know, if you watched about qualifying, he even joked, he paused and talked about pure talent. And he paused, he said, and my, my team's pure talent. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but you get the idea from somewhat polarizing, uh, but an important personality to NASCAR in this sport. But we saw a little bit of a different Kyle Busch in this victory lap. Uh, he was humbled by this victory. It was really cool to see him have so much emotion and sort of reflecting on the accomplishments. I don't think anybody's ever won at every racetrack. He becomes the first to do that. And just the way he dominated this race tonight, it was amazing. He's definitely one of the favorites to win the championship. And you can see how and how thankful he was for that victory tonight. And for Chevrolet, uh, even though they don't get to victory lane, we saw Jimmy Johnson, uh, who of course has owned this place in the past, and once they do get their speeds in order, we saw the finish, at least the contention. Also, uh, we saw it from Kyle Larson, who had a nice little run early before he spun. Well, I just saw Jimmy Johnson and Jamie McMurray saying, our cars aren't quite where we want them to be yet. We're going to have to drive harder. I mean, they ran an inch off the wall all night long. I was very impressed by the effort from those guys and a little bit surprised from the lack of performance from Joey Logano. Started up front, fell to the back. He's another guy we think will race for this championship, but he's got some issues here tonight. But a long night uh, went fast for Kyle Busch, who was outstanding. Next on Fox, late local news, except on the West Coast. And we'll head to Pocono, where if you go back, Kyle Busch ended his career longest winless streak there at Pocono last July. And then that was his first win at Pocono. He ended a string of 36 races, so he'll come back as a successful winner from the Coca-Cola 600. For our director, Arnie Kempner, and producer, Barry Landis, and Andy Jeffers, and Michael Waltrip, I'm Chris Myers. For our entire crew, thanks for being a part of NASCAR and Fox. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.